against the White Sox. You do that when you have two walk-off wins. The Orioles took advantage of mistakes, and they won. Now, you have your pioneer at two if you can get Tampa Bay. Struggling this season, Joe Madden brings in a team that looks to be had. But beware, a doubleheader. Game one is next. on Masson and we welcome you to Camden Yards where the Orioles get set to go in this four game set because of the double header today it's the Rays and the O's and again a chance for the Orioles to make some ground up on Toronto leading in first in the division. Hi everybody I'm Gary thought to welcome great to have you with us as we get set for this day night double header one o'clock for this one seven o'clock for the ball game tonight. They are separate admissions. So if you want to come to the ball game tonight by all means there will be seats available and for the Orioles a chance against this Tampa Bay team maybe to take a couple more ball games. Now the Orioles have had to make some roster changes to get ready for this game. You can add a player for a doubleheader. So the Orioles plan to do that to get their starter in at the bottom of the page. Kevin Gosman is here recall from Norfolk. But at the top, Bud Norris went on the DL with that groin problem. So Kevin Gossman is able to take Bud Norris's place rather than be the 26 guy. Evan Meek has been recalled from Norfolk. He is 0 2, 6 3 9 to give the Orioles some help in the bullpen. So those, those are the changes for game one of this doubleheader, Jim. Well, they are. And of course, uh, you know, Bud Norris, uh, Bud. Uh, Buck Showalter thought he would actually be able to uh, come back. Uh, you know, he actually pitched very well against the Yankees, tried to, on Wednesday to, to do his throwing, still the right groin. So uh, they have six starters, so you can actually put them on the DL, bring Meek up, your bullpen will be where you want. And Gosman, uh, his last three starts have been terrific. I mean, you know, they brought him up short day rest, his first start, didn't pitch well against the Tigers, six or more innings. Uh, he is. I mean, one of my keys to the game today is going to be the real deal because he is. He's pitched well. He has a bunch. Just seems like he has a much better aura about him. I think he understands what he has to do to be successful. And he's had one very good outing against Tampa Bay already this season. These two teams meeting in yet another series where the Orioles have dominated this year. You take a look at the numbers on the season. Certainly nothing like last year. The Orioles lead 7-1 in the series. They've out hit them. They've outscored them. They have out homered them in the ERA significantly different Orioles Jim have dominated so far against him. Yeah I think the one thing and you talked about last year Tampa Bay won 13 of the 19 games. So uh, I think the point you made about doubleheader against the Rays doesn't really matter. Uh, you know the Rays 90 or more wins five out of the last six years. So you never take it for granted. But the one thing the one number that jumped out at me and something they've done a little bit better when we talk about the Rays is the pitching. They usually have some one of the best pitching staff. Uh, they're right there with the Orioles as far as earn run average. But they've pitched better in June. So you got to be beware because this is a ball club that hasn't played well. They're last in offense. They are 10 games under 500 to 13 and 23 with uh, on the road. So but they still have. Uh, business to do against the Orioles because they always play well against the O's. Now the Orioles going to have a chance to gain a little ground. They are two games behind uh, Toronto. Toronto continuing to lead in the American League East but certainly an East that is still wide open. And when we talk about Tampa Bay yes it will take some sort of a miracle for them to get back into it. Think about the wild card though and the opportunity to do that. They are not yet completely out of it. So the games now Jim for them become absolutely essential already before we even get to July. Well it really does. And again you go back they had 90 or more wins five out of the six years of when we had a chance to see Joe Madden uh, their skipper down on the ring he said the season's not over. Everybody's talking about trading uh, you know David Price because they need some players but they at the end of the day they're on another long road trip. They've had uh, what four. 10 or more game, uh, road trips. So if they have a good road trip, maybe they won't trade price and maybe they will get get back in the race. And that's what they're going to try to do this afternoon. And the Orioles are going to try and take the first one, then move on to the night game tonight. So when we come back, this one will be a day game. It's the Rays and the Orioles game one of two.
Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Glorious day to what's supposed to be a great weather weekend here in the Baltimore area. Take a look at our train game time temperature. We are at 82 degrees. A little breeze blowing in right now from center field. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard. Starting lineup for game one for the Rays. Jennings, Kiermaier, Zobris, Longoria, Loney, and Geyer, Joyce Rodriguez, and Molina. Evan Longoria trying to get things heated up a little better this month, especially home runs and RBIs. And Kevin Gosman, well, here's our scouting report, the real deal. If you're going to give a lot of money to a number one draft choice out of LSU, this is the type of pitcher you want. Power arm, very much like Dylan uh, Bundy. You know, change ups better than the slider. That's a work in progress. Composure, bases loaded in his last start. Uh, a little bit of problem with the umpire, but able to get out of it. Uh, six innings against Tampa Bay. So again, the composure went to the bullpen last year after some early starts, and then he's on a win streak. He's won his last three games, wants to make it four. And Kevin looking to uh, stay in the rotation. That's the expectation, even though he's been uh, down and still has to finish up the 10 days. When he was sent back to the minors, but uh, here he is to make the start in this one as the added player is major league record uh, coming into the ball game for Kevin is uh, moving up six and six four seven one ERA, but a completely really different pitcher than mm -hmm. who was here last year. Yeah, and that started in spring training. Here is Jennings, and the pitch will be taken for a ball, and we are underway. Desmond Jennings, who is making the start. In center field, hitting 233 with a homer and an RBI against the Orioles on the season. Manny Machado, even with a bag at third, and the pitch will be taken outside for a ball. Tony Randazzo is our home plate umpire who tends, if to favor one or the other, probably it'll be the hitters. The strike zone will be perhaps a little bit tight. Gabe Morales, Jim Wolf, and Brian Gorman, the crew chief, working this first game of the doubleheader. 2 0 the count. Kevin Gosman's delivery and taken in the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, has it not pitched in nine days, so we'll see if that has any factor. Uh, pitched uh, what the Wednesday before this last Wednesday down in Tampa Bay, and then went with the ball club to New York. They sent him out. He's done some throwing, so let's hope he's ready. There's a borderline pitch, knee high. It's the outside corner with it. Last start, Major League against Tampa Bay, came on the 18th. He gave up no runs, five hits, six innings. And an outstanding outing, picking up his third win of the season. He has won his last three. The loss came against Detroit in his opener this year. 2 2 delivery. Jennings will go towards Short Hardy deep in the hole. Take a look at the Oriole defense. In fact, you're going to see two clubs that are among the best defensive clubs Pierce, Jones, Marcakis, Jones, and Marcakis, Gold Glovers, Machado, and Hardy, the same. Uh, they're third and short. Uh, Scope plays uh, second base, and then uh, Chris Davis, Caleb Joseph, the rookie catcher for the Orioles. And a look. Uh, speaking of rookies, Kevin Kiermeyer coming up. Kiermeyer getting a chance at the major league level because of injuries this year, and they want to take a look at him. He is 23 years old, a 31st round pick back in 2000, 2010, but they really like the way he plays. Kiermeyer is uh, can't use that term uh, a dirtbag ball player in the finest <laughs> sense of it. It's a whatever to the wall kind of guy. Well he's very athletic. Very he's very athletic. To him. But he's very pumped up mm -hmm. and talking to the uh, people from Tampa Bay. I mean he he runs he charges everything both offensively and defensively. Joe Madden loves the style. If he hits a ball into the outfield for a single, he's going to make a throw to second. He'll try and get an extra base on every hit he gets. That ball will be looped back the other way, so he adds a little uh, little jingle to the game. And he's off, yeah, he's off to a good start. I mean, the four home runs and only 90 at bats. Uh, when the Orioles uh, played the Rays week before last down there, the fastballs out over the plate really got to him well. Breaking balls may be up, obviously. Most guys hit those, but now you can see they're throwing them change ups and trying to see if he can hit the the, uh, the secondary pitches. Gosman will put that one in the dirt. Kiermaier's recent call up was on May 28, and since then he has led rookies in uh, extra base hits, third in slugging, second in uh, OPS, 
and uh, second in on base percentage since his call up among rookies. One two delivery on the way that'll go to where they weren't playing. He's hustling down the line Manny Machado not going to get him. Just what we were talking about. He will pick up the infield hit on a ball that wasn't hit that hard and into the shift. Yeah I think when you throw and, and we haven't seen I mean it's pretty routine if you're playing uh, there. I mean normally that would be your shortstop position. But uh, Manny playing a little bit more to the left side because uh, he actually moves over from third base and then uh, Kiermaier you see the speed and uh, that factor. So Kiermaier gets on with the first hit of the ball game. He's been a guy who runs in the minors uh, over the years. He said 27 17 14 stolen bases one for two this year since joining the ball club. And here is Ben Zobrist. Zobrist is getting the start at shortstop in uh, this game. Escobar had to come out of the ball game a couple of games ago normally at shortstop but the right shoulder bothering him so he came out on Thursday and uh, that moves Obris to short throw over and on his belly back. Zobrist so has long been a very tough out for the Orioles, but this year hitting only 185 against the Orioles, and he is a 281 lifetime hitter against those pitching. There are a lot of these Rays who have done damage against the O's who this year are not. 1 0, there goes the runner. He's going to get a chance, and he got him. Yeah, Again, wow. Caleb Joseph with the arm. Well, it's almost like a pitch out. I mean, he makes a little turn with his body. That's the way you cheat a little bit. And again, a perfect pitch to throw on, and then a perfect throw. Nice slap tag by Hardy. See, I mean, you could see him cheating, kind of getting to his left. It's almost like they knew he was running. So, if you were playing for Oregon, you would be a dead duck. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's out mm -hmm. by a long margin. Ball put up in the air, high sky, a lot of glare here today. Left field is Pierce, and he's got it. So Zobris retired, so the Rays, no runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left on. Joseph throwing out 45% of base stealers. Of the starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Their fares online only at Southwest.com. Marquegas, Pearson, Jones, Davis, Cruz, and Hardy Machado scope, and Joseph Nelson Cruz. The 24 home runs tied for most in the majors. And uh, Alex uh, Colomay, well, top prospect, number five on their uh, top ten by Baseball America. Power arm, uh, he's got three or four pitches. There's a slider. You see that. 26 man just like Kevin Gossman brought up uh, with double headers you can bring up that extra guy and then uh, apparently took some kind of boulder dome or something like that suspended for 50 games apparently it's something that uh, they give to horses or whatever. <laughs> well, well I'm just 
<laughs> I, I think they prefer carrots, but <laughs> well, no, I'm I mean, sure players along do. with the apples and the carrots. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so he was suspended and uh, actually pitched very well down at uh, actually double A AA and triple A. So he comes up to the big leagues. And uh, we know about guys that you haven't heard of 10 and 5 against the really good pitchers. So you it's good stuff. Uh, everything I've heard and talking to people is just about the command issues. So if he gets it over it could be a tough starter for the Orioles out of the Dominican Republic only 25 years old his major league record one and one. This will be his major league fourth start fifth game. Tampa Bay Rays hoping like Gosman. He'll prove that he needs to stay. And Nick Marquegas leading it off for the O's. Marquegas sitting 286 this year off the Rays, who will play him straight up with the word around that he uses all fields. Outfield uh, as well as the infield, pretty much straight away. Delivery by Colome Toim will be inside for a ball. Orioles coming in, trying to put up. More numbers, not only against Tampa Bay, but against the division. They have done outstanding work against the division with their 21 and 13 mark against the East. And for Buck Show Alders Club, the two for one games really matter. And there's why that infield shifted around. He goes the other way again and again, a leadoff single. Yeah, they play on the left center, as, as you mentioned, and you could see more hits to left field than, and then center than it is to right. So three straight fastballs. He finds a hole, and the way you do that is hit it, hit the ball hard, and he did. Mm -hmm. I wanted a little flare. I mean, that's just a fastball out over the plate. You're not trying to pull, let the ball travel, and then ping it into left field. And I don't know if anybody on this club does it better of going to the opposite field than Nick Marquez. Hitting 390 now in his first at bat in ball games this year, Marquez. Here is Steve Pierce. Pierce in left field for the Orioles. Colomay's delivery is going to go all the way to the backstop right by Molina for Pierce. Look at the numbers against the Rays. Three home runs, six RBIs, a 444 batting average against Tampa Bay. In fact, uh, he's got an RBI opportunity now with a runner down to second base. Yeah, just a and buzzes a fastball. This is kind of reminiscent of what went on, and well, it should have at least been blocked. I'm not sure if Nick might have still, but. Ball close, 94. And a great effort by Molina, who's a very good defensive catcher. So Pierce, RBI chance for the Orioles. Looking for a pitch away, came up and into him, and the count will go to 2 0. Oh. Well, we always, if you're around the game, and uh, whether you're a player, broadcaster, fan, scout, whatever, coach, it's amazing because the waivers uh, for Steve Pierce could have gone to. Uh, up to Toronto and he comes back here and he comes back because of the injury uh, to Chris Davis and it happened just before they went to Tampa Bay. So those numbers you saw all the home runs and the other thing is and we got to see for the first time him playing on a daily how good a first baseman he is. So he can play a, a lot of different positions. He runs well for a guy that's a power guy. And comes prepared to the ballpark. 3 0 cow with Mark Agus at second the outfield deep. He's taking all the way it is in there for a strike. There's a little breeze blowing in. We don't have this very often, not a prevailing breeze, at least normally. And as you see the flags on furled coming in this way, it will swirl back out usually towards right end or left, depending on the moment. And then sometimes it'll hit here, the you know, the warehouse out in right center and swirl and three one delivery, and I think he went on blade umpire. Tony Randazzo will make the swinging strike call, and the count goes to three and two. So all fastballs so far is what they're looking at. That bat will well out of home, front of home plate. So they got that call right. They're sitting uh, 333 with runners in scoring position, 10 for 30, and three home runs in these situations. Marikakis off second base. Here's the 3 2 delivery, and that'll be looped the other way and foul. I certainly would like to get him over if not in and well, the minute you get to three and two you're just battling. So every pitch all nine of them four for balls five for strikes have been fastballs. But he does have a slider and he does have a changeup slider a little bit better than a changeup is down on the list. Seventh pitch of this at bat will be coming they squeeze Pierce towards the middle Rodriguez second baseman over by the bag. 
Again, the 3 2 delivery on the way, and Pierce again will fight it off and foul it back. This is what Buck Martinez, Buck Martinez, Buck Showalter was talking about the other day. And he said uh, about playing Pierce every day, he said it's easy, and the words he used was trust. I trust him. Trust him defensively, trust him at the plate, trust him to have a game plan. And I really, he said, like him in the number two spot because he's battling pitchers and really early in the game pushing those pitch counts up. And he's used the whole field, uh, something that Manny Machado hitting in the number two spot did so well last year. Three ball, two strike count. Marquegas, good lead at second base. And he's on. There's the breaking ball, first one. So not easy. I don't care if you're 25 or whatever, boy, 10 straight fastballs and try to get a breaking ball over and he misses. Here's his pitching coach, Jim Hickey. Adam Jones coming. Oh, there they are. No defense for the walk. Geyer uh, Jennings. Here Meyer. Uh, that's the outfield. Longoria, Gold Glover, Zobris, Rodriguez, Loney, and then uh, Jose Molina doing the catching. The veteran. So Adam Jones will stand in, and the Orioles get a real shot here in the first inning. Adam 293 with runners in scoring position, almost exactly the same number overall with that 297 mark. He's got a six-game hit streak. Coming into the ball game, and he will go after the first pitch, which was up and away. Yeah, really good fastball with a lot of life, and that's one of the definitions. You know, you, you look at 95, and then you get that. Uh, it's almost like it was a cut fastball. It moved so much, so a live fastball with great velocity, and it wasn't in the middle of the plate. Orioles this year against the Rays, 254 with runners in scoring position. That's just against the Rays. Which is uh, about 20 points lower than their overall number of 271, which is second in the league. 0 1 delivery on the way fouled off. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers regarding Adam by month. Yep, and a lot of it has to do with uh, getting hits to all parts of the field. Eight home runs in June. It started early when he was hitting singles, doubles, home runs to right field, and that's kind of continued. But eight of his 14 home runs in this month, and it's a nice little average. Just a tremendous season moving up in the all star balloting which uh, if you haven't voted you can only do so online now so. If you haven't cast your ballot for the all star players. Get going running out of time. We're at June 27 already. Holy moly. As Bill King would have said. Oh two count on Adam Jones runners on at first and second base. Pretty good lead at second. Jones will reach and fouls that back to hold the count of two strikes. Yeah, you, not a bad breaking ball. Molina slid to the corner and he just uh, threw it pretty much in the middle of the plate, but it went straight down. And about seven miles per hour slower, so certainly it could be an effective pitch. I'm not sure how he'll well he'll be able to command it, but just the fact he now they know he'll throw it means something. Colome already up to the number of pitches he'd like to get three outs with in an inning, and he hasn't gotten anybody out. This is going to be the 15th pitch. Adam Jones, 0 2 count. Runner is off first and second, and Jones a slow roller. Longoria's got to go to first. So inadvertently, Jones will get the runners moved up. A productive out because he didn't hit it very hard. One down. And that'll bring Chris Davis up. So Chris will get the chance. Marquegas moves over to third base. Pierce goes down to second. And uh, Davis with the 300 average with runners in scoring position. You look at the difference between that and his overall average at 222. Well, it seems to me he focuses a little bit more. And it just looks like he also uses more of the field. Big shift is on against him, leaving. Only one on that left side. Colomay's delivery to him and a big swing and a miss. That yeah, it, a long one. It seems like the guys that give him the most trouble are the power pitchers, and it looks to me that Colomay could be one of those guys because he can throw 95, and I'm not sure if he can locate up and in out over the plate. Chris, much more dangerous hitter, 207 hitter this month, but six home runs, and would like to maybe add another one here. Colomeo looked to third base. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and Davis will foul it off. 
Colome was a, has been a strikeout pitcher as you would expect from what you've seen already in the game and his minor league career totals. He struck out 644 batters in 638 innings. So just a little over a strikeout per inning in the minors. A lot of minor league innings pitched 638 in the minors only a 20 innings pitched at the major league level coming into today's game. Davis with an 0 2 count and one down. Orioles need a base hit to get it. They get two runs. Set up outside Molina. That's where the pitch was. One and two. The elbow problems last year and have shelved him, and then the year before, some shoulder problems. So, would have even had more experience in the minors had it not been for the injuries. Only start against Toronto this year. Two runs, three hits over four innings back on May 26. Otherwise, he's been pitching in the minors. One ball, two strike delivery on the way, and Davis thought he had one to drive, fouls it back, and uh, Molina may have thought the same thing. Yeah, well, that was up. a changeup, and it was 88. A lot of guys, that's what their fastball is. And I think Jose saying, boy, that's that not only was it 88, but it was pretty much in the middle of the plate. That's a home run pitch. So they're going to have a little talk. Big moment early in the game. Whole transition of the ball game gets changed here in the first inning. No matter what happens now, the Orioles have got a chance to put a thumb on the uh, on the box here against Tampa Bay early, and Colomay's got a chance if he could find a way out to raise their interest in this game. Oh, no, very much so. Shift on. One two. Davis will take it again. It's going to miss outside. Trying to get him to go after a pitch away. And another change up. And I mean, every game is different. But if you want to, you know, look through the Rays. I mean, here they are. They've played uh, 80 games, and they're averaging three runs a game on the road. Now, it doesn't mean that's going to happen today, but that is a trend. So get some runs. Make it uncomfortable. Make them try harder. Two to the count. Outfield very deep. Davis got jammed. It'll go into the shift. Second base, Rodriguez will record the out. A run will score. Marquez crosses the plate with the first run of the ball game. Chris Davis will be credited with the RBI, and the Orioles have a one nothing lead. Yeah, you phrased it perfectly. Inadvertently, Adam Jones uh, gets them with runners at first, to second, to second, and third, and then. If you're not scoring a lot of runs, then you're Joe Madden. You're going to play your infield back, and they take advantage of it. Routine ground ball gets a run in. RBI. Yay. Davis now has picked up a 41 runs batted in on the season, and here's Nelson Cruz. Pierce moved over to third base. There are two down. Cruz working as the designated hitter in the ball game, and he'll take the first pitch in there for a strike. Take a look at Nelson. It was interesting. There was a story regarding Nelson. They were trying to figure out, well, what's the difference? Why is he so good this year? And they looked at fastballs. This season, 379. Previous years, 293. Slugging percentage way up this season, but no answer as to why. Ball put up in the air to right center field. That's in the yard. Warning track and hauled in by Jennings for the out. The Orioles, though, will get a run on one hit, no errors, one left on. Game one of our doubleheader.
and Tampa Bay despite all their struggles the fact of the matter is they have tried to get things turned around a little yeah and they've done it uh, as we've seen they, they scored which would probably be their average you know for the year on the right when, when they've gone eight and six and the other thing which is really important this is what they do best I mean the last six years they've had one of the best ERAs Jim Hickey you know usually voted as one of the best pitching coaches he's always had guys that have been able to do that so um, uh, at the end of the day I, I don't think you ever take them lightly and I was looking at the overall I mean they came into being back what 1998 and their life their lifetime record is 1200 what uh, 1227 wins 1443 losses but against the Orioles 142 and 143 so they've always played the Orioles tough even when they were having the losing years. One nothing lead for the O's Kevin Gossman on top as we go to the second inning Longoria will lead it off. The third baseman at 264, 12 doubles, 10 home runs, 37 RBIs. Down to third base, easy roll, Manny Machado, and the out recorded on one pitch. Our day night doubleheader continues at Oriole Park tonight. The Birds take on these Rays in game two. It'll be 7 05. And at the ball game tonight, the first 20,000 fans, 21 and over, will get the Orioles' floppy hat presented by Miller Lite. So kickstart your weekend with a great night of baseball tickets. Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. And if you're around, still time to get in here for game one of the doubleheader. Here's James Loney. Loney will come in with a six-game hit streak. Loney up to 289 now as a result of the streak that he's on. Kevin Gosman, left handers hitting only 208 against him, and right handers at 278. Limited at bats, of course. It is only his fifth start of the year. Well, he's got a good two seamer, four seam fastball. Changeup is, uh, again, his best secondary pitch. Slider, still a work in progress. He's yet to throw one here. Loney will take the fastball down low. Evan Meek uh, called up today. With Bud Norris going on the DL. So Meek is here, and that adds again to the bullpen. Evans been one of those up and down players for the Orioles this year, and the ever shifting name changes in the bullpen. Yeah, so what will happen if Gosman pitches, he can go back, fulfill his 10 days at AAA, and then come back for his next start. Meek can take his place as the 25th man on the roster, take Bud Norris's place, and then he'll be in pretty good shape pitching wise. Yep. And a walk. So Kevin Gossman surrenders the free pass with one down. Loney gets it. We have not seen his normal velocity, and his normal velocity is somewhere 93 to 98. Every once in a while, hit 99. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe trying to find his rhythm after having pitched in nine days. That'll bring Geyer to the plate. Brandon Geyer trying to get back into game shape. He'd been on the DL, came off June 19. And the fractured left thumb has now started in eight straight ball games, starting in left field. And it has yeah, been yeah. such a problem for Tampa Bay, and none more so, of course, than losing both Jeremy Hellickson and Matt Moore with the elbow and Tommy John surgeries, and then Will Myers with a fractured wrist. Yeah, and then Alex Cobb missed a bunch of time with an oblique pull. Yeah. They have had the uh, injury woes to names they can't win without. Geyer. 1 0 delivery to him. He'll get down to third, and that is a fair ball. Went right over the bag. Rolls into the corner. Loney heading to second base. He's third. They're going to wave him home. Hardy's got it. Relay throw to the plate. He is not in time. Bounces away. Kevin Gosman backs it up. It's an RBI double for Geyer. Loney scores, and it's 1 1. Yeah, the one thing about Geyer, and we saw him hit his first major league home run here a couple of years ago, and then he got sent out because of roster problems, is that he's a fastball hitter. So if you get behind him, which he does, if you're looking to get your command, which Kevin Gosman is, and then, uh, you know, they're thinking he's going to stop at third, but they're playing him out in left center. So it's a long, long, long run for Pierce. And by the time he gets it, even though J.J. Hardy makes a nice relay, uh, the Rays tie it up 1-1. Tom Foley, a third base coach, had no intention of of sending him. He was going to hold him up, but that ball was hit so slowly that uh, by the time he got the third, it was just being picked up by Pierce. So he started the windmill. 
Now a runner on at second base, one one ball game, one down, and here is Joyce. Yeah, the uh, the biggest foul, or really the biggest area, to play here as an outfielder is left field. That's how Brady Anderson uh, got moved there by Johnny Oates because he had great speed and he was a good outfielder, so he moved him to the toughest position. No. And uh, down goes Kevin Gosman. The runner will go to third base. It'll be a wild pitch. And hey, uh, it looked like he right. just slipped. Yeah. And it's really the the back foot, not the front foot. So a wild pitch, and watch him push off. And when he does, it foot just slips. Mm. So it cost him a wild pitch. Like Showalter uh, backing the infield up now on the right side. No, I was going to move him back in. So Joyce. With a 2 0 count, runner at third, 1 1 game, and the infield's halfway. Joyce, the DH, will put it up in the air, third base, Machado. And lost it. I, mean, I don't think he ever saw it. Nope. Yeah. He didn't know where it was. It's a foul ball. Wind is now blowing out. So yeah, we're going to have a swirling wind here today. It might have been a ball, but I, again, I don't think he picks it up, so he never really gets to the wall, and then he ducks away from it. Because it's only about a row or so in. I mean, he's also at that point right where there's you know, the scoreboard or something that juts out a little bit. So not an easy play by any means. If he'd have seen it, he'd have been yeah. in there. And he, I would think so. Yeah, he didn't. Two ball, one strike count. Infield even further in. That's going to go through a base hit. So Joyce delivers the RBI single. The wild pitch on the slip by Gosman setting up the run, and it is a two to one Tampa lead. Uh, nice at bat by uh, Matt Joyce. Infield in, fly ball, hit it hard, 95 away, stays up a little bit. Watch him cover this ball. I mean, great angle right here. Tries to pull it, probably right to the shortstop for second. And just shoots it the other way. Very un uh, Joyce like, more of a pull hitter. So now runner at first base, one down, and the big swing taken by Rodriguez. John Rodriguez getting the start at second base in the ball game as the Rays come right back after the Orioles got that run in the first inning get the RBIs by Geyer and Joyce and take a two to one lead on three hits showing bunt that's for a base hit Manny Machado barehanded throw and a good one he got him Boy, that's an outstanding play because that was labeled base hit all the way. Yeah, don't ever take the Rays and the, the way they play this game. I mean, Rodriguez is one of the hackers. I mean, he's got seven home runs, 109 at bats, so he tries to bunt his way on. And then uh, Manny, this is why uh, he got the platinum gold glove, or whatever you want to call it, platinum glove, which is the best of the gold glovers. It'll uh, move a runner into scoring position, and Molina. Will get the RBI chance. Molina's really struggled at the plate. He is two for 34 with runners in scoring position, and he's hitting only 167 overall. And it has taken four a strike. Did they give him a sacrifice on that, or uh, just a ground ball out? Could have been either, because he was bunting for a base hit. He wasn't bunting to sacrifice, but that's up to the official scorer as to how they uh, call that. 0-1 count, two down. And Molina will take the pitch outside. A one ball, one strike count. Tampa Bay team coming in with the offense having been a, a huge problem, even though the bigger losses have been to the pitchers. They're 11th in average, last in runs, 13th in home runs, and he finally chases that pitch. And a one ball, two strike count. Yeah, really good changeup. Bottom drops out. Yeah, he's got one that acts like a splitter. That was it. And he's got another straight changeup. And Rodriguez not given a sacrifice. Really? Yeah, just a ground down. That's appropriate. He was bunting for a base hit. Here's the one two delivery on the way, and that'll be way outside. So should could they change that if he bunts for a base hit and he gets him into scoring position and the next guy gets a hit? You would think you'd get some kind of bonus for that. Because well, it would have served, it would have served getting a guy into scoring. You position. give a guy a bonus for a ground ball to the right side, and moves him around to the third. Well, they thought about doing that. They no, did. they don't. But no. 
that gets. Mm. No, I, I see your point. Yeah, I mean, it's just. 2 2 delivery on the way, and, and the pitch up high. And of course, Matt Joyce would be doing jumping jacks and all that. That's come right. on, uh, Jose. Uh, come on. I, I want. You're a pitcher arguing for hitters. You realize that? No, I'm, I'm just giving oh. you. Okay. I just well, all think. I know is it's more difficult to pitch with the guy at second than he was yes. at first. So, point well taken. what Sean Rodriguez did makes it harder for you mm -hmm. to pitch. 3 2 delivery on the way, and uh, outside corner strike. Molina was heading down to first base. He'll now have to get his equipment on. But a couple of runs in on two hits with the base runner left on. The lonely walk started it, and he would score. Chilpa Patel from Owings Mills. You've won 500 for being selected, 500 more for every Orioles home run hit. Play the Orioles scratch off from the Maryland Lottery. Your chance to be a contestant of the game. Win a trip to see the O's play at Wrigley or to the MLB World Series. You can learn more at mdlottery.com slash Orioles. But Norris placed on the DL today by the Orioles with a growing problem that was Still there and just not able to throw. So, 15 day DL goes back to June 22. Yeah, I think he can pitch again if his if the groin uh, heals and it's the right side. So it's the one you push off of. Uh, I think July 7th because they backdate it. They go back to when he was originally hurt. So the Orioles bat down a run. Bottom of the second inning. Here's J.J. Hardy, Manny Machado, and Jonathan Scope against Alex Colome. And his pitch is outside for a ball. Hardy hitting 300 off Tampa Bay pitching this year in the eight games they've played. Pitch taken away. And Colomay falls behind 2 0. See the problem he has with control early in the game working. Behind well, you hitters. can tell it looks like most of the guys that have trouble have this kind of wind up. I mean he starts he's like he's almost from a stretch. And what he's trying to do is just keep and you have it if we watch him and notice a little bit in the first he's going to fall a little bit to his left. So he, anybody that usually does that falls off towards the Oriole dugout. Uh, to his or really to his left or our right is that they try to get that line a little bit. More direct to home plate. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way. Hardy to shallow center. Jennings will be called off. Rodriguez, the second baseman, puts it away. Win a chance to have lunch with Buck Showalter, courtesy of Masson. Just be sure to follow Masson on Twitter. Use hashtag Masson Orioles in your tweets all week long to be automatically entered to win. So, one person or a group, maybe? What do you mean? Do you know? I do not know that. Better bone up for that lunch because uh, Buck's been known to ask questions. <laughs> that's what. That's what I remember when he first came over. Jeremy Guthrie said, "Boy, he keeps asking me questions. I don't have answers to." And I went to Stanford. 
Manny Machado in a swing and a miss. Manny with one down, nobody on. He'll come in with a four game hit streak. Orioles here on this 11 game homestand, starting out two and one against the White Sox. They hit 321 against Chicago. 0 1 delivery. And the average 4.3 runs a game in that three game set. The starters had an ERA of over five and took one loss. The Oriole bullpen got the two wins with an ERA of point six nine. Yeah, five and two thirds scoreless on Wednesday to win an uh, extra inning. That's a good changeup. Best of the afternoon. Well, he's already proved uh, the, what the first two hitters nothing but fastballs and then tried to incorporate the slider through a couple of changeups and then that one that thrown about as well as you can throw one. One ball, two strike count. Chato to be followed by Jonathan Scope and a timeout asked for at the plate by Molina. Colome will step off and take the signs again from his catcher. Sun shining down on a good crowd here for the opener. A lot of folks will come in late for the first game. It is a double, remember. Two games, double header, but are separate admission games. Seven o'clock for the ball game tonight. And as the Orioles will have Chris Tillman going on the mound, as he will be looking for his seventh win of the season in Game Two. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. I don't think it's going to get any higher than maybe upper 70s tonight. And as you mentioned, there is a nice breeze. Perfect night to come out and watch an Oriole game. Odorizzi will be in the ball game for the Rays in game two. That ball popped up first base side, and that will end up out of play. Yeah, Molina takes his helmet off because that was you know, a uh, hanging slider. A veteran catcher, rookie pitcher. Keeps you on your toes. How many times are you going to see two call up pitchers starting against one another? Only in the doubleheader does the rule make that really possible. The 26th player in each case is the pitcher for this doubleheader. One ball, two strike count, and the delivery will be taken inside. So Manny Machado works into the 2 2 as that pitch count up to 33. And obviously, with a doubleheader and a 4 o'clock game tomorrow. Neither manager wants to go into that bullpen early, and neither wants to go in very deep overall in these two games because these games are going to really jump out at both clubs. Four o'clock tomorrow, 1:30 Sunday. Two-two delivery by Colome and up the middle, right through the wickets, and it's a base hit. Machado's got a five-game hit streak and a one-out base hit. Now, when you fling it and uh, it gets out of your hand and it's on its way to home plate, you become a defender. So if you can't field your position, and you can see him falling off to his left. Ball goes literally, literally goes right between his legs. When you're fortunate that you don't get hit. And again, Molina out there, kind of teaching and. Talking as he goes along, a lot of visits to the mound early. Column A. Well, we mentioned uh, in, in, in the keys to the game that he is their top uh, top ten prospect, number five. So you know he's got a good arm, and when you read all these prospects lists, most of the guys they'll say you know, pitches between 93 and 95, which he does. You know, working on a slider, has a third pitch, the change up, work in progress, and that's exactly what Column A is. But he does have a good arm. And he can get away with pitches in the middle of the plate, especially fastballs, because of the stuff. And the delivery of ground ball to short. Zobrist has got it. Rodriguez will relay to first and the easy double play. No runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base after two. Raise up.
you a chance to see that side of Buck Showalter talking today about soccer in the World Cup. Let me get this right. Y'all got to help me. The soccer team. We lost and advanced. This is a great game. How'd that work? <laughs> we got to get that rule in. We kind of live to fight another day so that we can win the next game. Right. It's a whole different sport. They don't. So let me get this. There's pictures coming out of them celebrating after a loss. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave that one alone, too. Really? <laughs> Uh, it's great. Uh, every day we just kind of wait because it's so entertaining and it's generally, I mean, he's got it, he's on point on something, a point he wants to make. Our Buck Bites, uh, the skipper Buck Show. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it just starts with a monologue. You never know. And it's good. He doesn't know. And he doesn't even have, well, I don't think, I don't know if Angela's wife helps him, but he, uh, you know, Letterman, Leno. They all have writers. Oh, I don't know about pay Buck. a lot of I money. Buck just comes up with that. He just, yeah. he just has it. <laughs> one ball, one strike count. Desmond Jennings, the leadoff batter, who grounded out his first time up. Kiermaier and Zobris do up two to one. Third inning, Rays on top by a run. And that pitch will be taken down low. These two teams have met in doubleheaders previously. Last time was 2008. And the Rays swept the doubleheader here at Camden Yards in September. Previously, the Orioles have won one, sweeping, been swept, and split the other doubleheader that these clubs have been involved in. Well, we used to play them, and a lot of times we had scheduled doubleheaders. Hank Bauer, Earl Weaver, hey, can't win two unless you win the first one. Down to third and foul. And that's kind of where it starts. Yep. And we ran numbers on that once last year on doubleheaders. I thought that probably doubleheaders were usually split. I mean, it just seemed to me that would, but they weren't. Sweeps are more common in doubleheaders than are splits. And I think it was like a 60 40 split. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. Goes the other way foul off the bat of Jennings. Orioles had a doubleheader against Pittsburgh May 1st. Came away with the two wins in that doubleheader. This is the second doubleheader for the O's this season. Evan Gosman on the mound to walk in a strikeout so far. Jennings, the 2 2. And he'll take it down low and work it full. Kevin Gosman, a magnificent June with a 3 0 record ERA of .95 in June. Only two earned runs in 19 innings coming in. The Tampa Bay got to him for two runs in the second inning. 3 2 delivery, and that one ripped foul. Twenty three year old. Yeah, that's what you're talking about right there. Three and zero in his last three starts. And, mm. Nice ERA. That's fair ball. Backhanded yeah. Machado smoothly. Yeah. Unbelievable. He makes it look so so easy and it's not. And a lot of it is your first step. Your balance. Great glove. Great arm. Doesn't have to hurry because he knows. Just catch it. Um, of course, that's a big just, but he makes it look easy and then the, the rocket arm. Accurate. Manny yesterday hosting the uh, charity bowling event. A lot of the teammates, most of the teammates were there. All the coaches were there. Buck Showalter was there. It was really a great event. They sold out raising money for the baseball program's inner city in Baltimore and did a great job with it. 1 0 count. Kiermeyer had a single his first time up. Got thrown out trying to steal. Kiermeyer will lift that one up in the air. Shortstop. Hardy shading his eyes and will make the catch. Mm. Yesterday, Manny Machado's first ever baseball tournament for the Baltimore City Foundation. He hosted it. At the Mustang Alley here in downtown Baltimore in the off day. Tough to get players to come off days. They did. They raised nearly $100,000 in the event yesterday. 
All the great sponsors and the silent auction one of the great silent auctions I've ever seen at an event like that. Pitch is taken inside for a ball and those in charge of the inner city programs are there too. Really appreciating the money because they're strapped for cash. I didn't realize talking with them. There's very little apparently high school baseball in Baltimore anymore. But there aren't the funds to do it and they're trying to get the interest in the kids now who are younger seven eight so that it can work back up and get baseball going back in the high schools again. Zobris flied out his first time up. Here's the one one delivery on the way to him and that's away. But what if one of your older brother goes to that high school and you go why are you playing little league you can't play when you get into high school. Mm. So it just seems like if you're going to try to promote baseball. You do have to have the funds start young. Get the programs going. That's what they're trying to do. Here's the two one delivery on the way, and that's outside. Yeah, the nine days. It's uh, this is not the Kevin Gosman. I just, I mean, I'm just looking at the way the ball is coming out of his hand because a normal afternoon. And I don't mean he just because of winning three in a row, he has it figured out. Ball just jumps out of his hand today. A little bit more work. You can see. I mean, he's pulling balls and he's off the plate and. You know, just things he's a little bit more around his stuff today than normal. And nine days it makes a big difference. It's the second walk that he has surrendered. And that may be a lesson learned for the Orioles, but Showalter well, talks about it a lot. There are some pitchers he thinks need the extra day. They're better on uh, five days rest than four. Kevin Gosman may be one of those who needs to go on a regular rotation and uh, pitch every fifth. Longoria grounded out his first time up, the ever dangerous bat. He will take the pitch for a ball. Yeah, the uh, the first start when they brought him up because they were hurting for pitching, uh, he only got instead of four days in between. In other words, pitching on the fifth day, he pitched with three days, and the Tigers were hot at the time. They were on their way to 27 and 12 start, and he was in the way and got knocked around. So you can see that ball just—I mean, it's really about an inch. But he's kind of moved a little bit far, and he's right back over. And Caleb Joke is going to Joseph's going to go out and have a little talk, but he's back over on that third base sign, and it's, he's having trouble. And it looks to, to get to the outside corner against right-handers. And he had a little body language there that was negative. And as soon as Joseph saw that, Caleb headed out. Two who have worked a lot together in the minors as a battery. And you see how that strike zone's wandering around. Two downs, Oberst on at first base, Longoria with a ground ball out. Longoria is hitting only 200 against the Orioles this year. And the pitch will be taken down low again. Yeah, don't think he doesn't get the green light here because he is a bona fide home run guy. He loves this ballpark. He's had uh, 22 home runs against the Orioles in his career, and 12 of them have been hit here at Camden Yards. 3 0 runner goes and the pitch is outside and he walked him. So two walks in a row and three in the ball game. These two coming with two down and Dave Wallace will trot out to the mound. Aerial pitching coach wanting to take a look. On uh, the 23rd, four days ago, they did have Gosman pitch but one inning. He gave up. Three hit, two runs and three hits, including a home run in one inning at Triple A Norfolk on June 23rd. He threw 23 pitches. So not only, as Jim said, has he been been away from the start for those days, nine days, but in the middle did something he usually yeah. doesn't do. And a different ball. Yeah. Now, if you're doing your sides, Scotty McGregor, who is down in Sarasota for the Orioles, long time. Oriole organization, great left handed pitcher said, Yeah, we do have major league balls, but he was using a different ball. So, and again, not to discredit what Tampa Bay is, because when you're when you're struggling and you're well under 16 games under 500, but you've won eight out of your last 14, you'd like to have make a nine out of the last 15. So they're looking with the guy that hit more line drives, at least his percentage last year of any any uh, hitter in baseball. So there are the numbers. This guy does not have a problem hitting with runners in scoring position. First and second with two down, Drew Walks scored in the second inning. And the pitch in the dirt. You saw the dust come up on that one and a good stop made by Joseph. Loney coming in four consecutive multi hit games. During the streak, he's gone 11 for 25. I mean, it's not just a streak, it's a bonanza. Jim was talking about the Balls he hits for line drives almost 27 percent 
fifth highest in the American League. The line drive hits off the bat. And up high again, 2 and 0. Right now, uh, Gosman cannot find the strike zone. And the, the thing that makes uh, James Loney so tough is that he uses the whole field. He doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but capable of doing that. But he'll hit a line drive to left for the best of them. And that ball just. Remember velocity told, down, yeah. command down. Tony Randazza, we told you, is an umpire where the strike zone is fairly yeah. small, squeezed a little bit. You're not going to get those calls. 3 0 count again. I mean, those balls definitely off the plate, but yep. you know, I'd like to say, okay, I need to move it over an inch or two. 3 0 delivery is taking, and uh, that is a strike. Well, that's actually generous. And that ball off the corner, and he gets it, so he gets back into the count to some degree. Take a look. I mean, it's around there, but it, mm -hmm. uh, you can just see Caleb Joseph move the club back into the zone. Nava Bay one yeah. for two with runners in scoring position early on. Three ball, one strike count, runners off first and second base. Loney will swing through it. Well tipped into the middle. Yeah, so that uh, the 3-0 the pitch that was a ball that called that leads to that. And there's a really good fastball. Great late life, right on the corner. 3-2, two, two down, runners goes. Obrist at second, Longoria at first. Loney full count. He'll foul it and we'll do it again. Tampa Bay overall this year, 231 with runners in scoring position. That is 13th out of the 15 teams in the American League. Joe Madden's ball club struggling along. This is going to be the halfway point game for them. And uh, even if they win it, it's going to be their worst mark since 07 halfway through. They lose it. It'll be their worst record since 05 halfway through. 3 2 delivery on the way, and the ball put up in the air. Left field Pierce. He's under it and will put it away. Loney retired. So no runs, no hits, no errors. Couple of walks. Both runners are left on. The Rays have a one run lead. Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by Luna, for a bit of a new carpet, hardwood laminate. Call 877 241 Luna. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer with you. First game of the doubleheader today, and the Rays taking the early 2 to 1 lead. The Orioles winning 7 out of 8 so far in the year against this Tampa Bay team. Everybody in the American League East that played yesterday won. Toronto's got a two game lead over the Orioles three over the Yankees Boston's now eight games out and Tampa Bay twelve and a half behind Tigers are hot seven in a row in the central maybe they're going to try and pull away here Kansas City second place four and a half out they've lost two in a row.
And the pitch will be taken, and that is going to be ball one. As the Orioles bat with Caleb Joseph in the nine spot, then Marquecas and Pierce. Infield shift is put on now. They play him to pull. Rodriguez, second baseman, moves behind the bag, and he goes the other way. Could be a dying quail. It's fine. It died, but now we're in yeah. it. Well, good weekend uh, up in New York. With some really good bats. A couple of home runs in the last, what, four or five games for Caleb. Changed the swing a little bit, more upright, trying to make sure you stay on, or at least the intention is to stay on top of the ball. And he's getting a lot of regular at bats because he's doing most of the catching. Nick Hundley uh, traded for from San Diego, and of course he seems to be hitting and throwing better too. Mm -hmm. So one one delivery on the way to him, and he'll file that bask back off the top of the mask of Molina. Orioles having a good month of June, uh, fourteen and nine. As we said, we're closing in on it. So oh, that's why he's just yeah. around the corner. That's why the doubleheader. I mean, when you, you, if you split them, you're 15 and 10. You'd be happy with that. But boy, you lost the doubleheader. Boy, mm. then, then it takes a little bit of wind out of that sale. That 14 and 9 sale you're talking about. Again, all the way to the backstop. Colin has thrown a couple of those. And you look at what Tampa Bay was able to do last year on their way to 92 wins. Now they're certainly not playing at that level. Just about everybody's saying we need to play better. But they had one month where they won 18 games. They had another month where they won. They went 21 and 5, and then their last month they went 17 and 12. So the season's not over for them. 2-2 right. delivery on the way, and that'll be up in the air. Center field. Jennings. And Joseph is the first out of the third. Tomorrow, the first 20,000 fans, 15 and over at the game at 405, are going to receive a Chris Davis Crush City Performance T-shirt. Unique new design to your Birdland wardrobe. You can get it tomorrow. Tickets visit Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. 4 10. The ball game tomorrow. Wei in Chen and former Oriole left hander Eric Bedard will be scheduled to start that one. Sunday's ball game is 1 30. Miguel Gonzalez and Alex Cobb. One down. Arcakis at the top of the order. Base hit, run scored. Davis. Drove him in on a ground ball out in the first inning. For the Orioles, one nothing lead. Then the Rays came back on a double by Geyer and a single by Joyce in the second to take the two to one lead. 1 0 floats that one outside, 2 0. We're trying to figure out uh, who Colome reminds me of. Remember Juan Guzman who played for Toronto? Actually had some great years. Just have similar. Mannerisms and uh, if he had a split fingered fork ball, which he doesn't, and a little bit more command, it maybe remind me a little bit more of him. <laughs> right now, that command just isn't there. Both these pitchers having their problems with that. Jim Hickey. Well, go I to the water bottle. You know, I went through it, and where you know you can be effectively wild if. I mean, you can walk guys when you don't want to, but it's it's for hitters sometimes, especially for the Orioles who don't walk a lot. It can be difficult, and we've seen that where they don't really know guys, and they're not in any particular area or any particular pattern. And all of a sudden, you find yourself sixth, seventh inning, and you got maybe one run or two. Three one delivery to Marquez. Yeah, he's just trying to throw it over, and that one. At 93 with good life, it ends up down and in. That's not where he had any intention of throwing it. He just wanted to throw it. And I went through this early in my career. When you have good stuff, you try to anywhere in the strike zone. And then as you get older, you can hit the glove. You can get more pitches called by the umpire. But Colome not at that particular point, but still could be effective because of his stuff. Three balls, two strikes, one down, nobody on. Marquez Pierce waiting on deck. Colome and he will walk him. So there's the first walk surrendered by Colome in the game. And that will bring Pierce up. He had a walk his first time up. He has been uh, just Mr. Unbelievable. You see, through the 19th, nine, second fewest for the Orioles. He's been a big part of why since then, 80 home runs, second most in the majors. 
and they lead here in June with 35 home runs in the month of June. One down, runner at first, double play depth for the infield, breaking ball is going to miss up high. Colome throwing a lot of pitches. Here in June for Pierce, a 382 batting average, three home runs. Adam Jones leads the ball club this month with eight. And a swing and a miss on one of the better pitchers he's made today. 101. Kevin Gosman knows he's going to be in the Orioles rotation. Colomay does not. Yeah, they were thinking about bringing uh, Jeremy Hellickson who had the elbow surgery. But they think he's maybe one start away or he would have been the pitcher. That pitch this afternoon. Oh, Great breaking ball down. there. And inside corner. Well, so Colome will go ahead on the counter ball and two strikes. Yeah. It's a great view, isn't it? That overhead camera that allows you to see exactly where the ball was right on the inside corner. Very short lead at first from Arcacus. He had to reach for that and popped it up. Longoria will not have a play. He back into the seats. Count stays. One ball, two strikes on Pierce. Jim Wolf exercising at second base, the umpire. Brother of Randy. Yeah, of the Orioles. He was stretching. He had the hammies going and then back he had Ben. He was touching toes. And I don't blame him. Early in the day for everybody. One ball, two strike count, at least on a Friday. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and the delivery on the way, and he got him on a breaking ball that was down. And a good one. So he was all over the zone with his fastball, and then boom, and there's a. That's what you look for if you're pitching. Guy that's red hot, you know, if you're in the middle of the plate, he's going to have a good swing, and then you make that kind of pitch. The only thing better could have been with one out is for him to hit a ground ball one of your infielders and walk off the field but that was perfectly executed just off the plate. Colomay who has never faced the Orioles before. Two to one lead here in the third inning Jones up grounded out. His first time up. Adam with the runner at first Marquez. And a towering pop up third. Longoria. Out of room. Both managers had a lot of work to do preparing for the double header, just trying to figure out. Who was going to go where, pitching wise in particular? The Orioles, of course, kept waiting on the Manny Machado suspension hearing, which has been held, and for the announcement, praying the Orioles were that the announcement would not come today so that Machado would be available for this double header. One ball, one strike count. So the ruling is if they upheld it, or even if it would be three games, you play short during that period? Yes. Cannot replace these suspended. Oh, one's the count. That would keep me from trying to get suspended if I was a player. I yeah. know. I mean, it happens all the time. And we could bite somebody and get it over with. Here's the oh, one delivery on the way. Inside out foul. Was <laughs> I saw that? What is a hundred? I looked at the number at first. A hundred thousand. I looked at that and I went, the fine for that soccer player. Oh yeah. Hundred thousand. But then I, it was francs. Well, it, Swiss francs. Oh, okay. It's only well, I don't even know what is it? What's a franc for? Eleven thousand dollars, I think. Oh, was okay. What that was. But he was also suspended for like eight or nine games next year. Yeah. yeah. Can't that, even come into be a, rather Can't even come into the a stadium where soccer is being played. I can understand that. Well, I just get him a muzzle and invite him in. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what they do? Come on! <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I well, yeah. I'm, yes. Feed him. Agree. Feed him or whatever. 
O2 delivery is going to be foul back. What would possess you to do that? I, have I just don't no know. No idea. Ask Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Well, that too. I don't know why somebody would do that to you. Well, it's like. And he hadn't, we had done it before, right? I don't know about that. I don't that, think it was the first time he'd bitten somebody on a. On a soccer field. Looks like they don't have three cameras. times. They don't have cameras. I'm like how? I mean, come you know, on. They don't notice that stuff. I liked it because I just happened to turn the TV on. The game was actually on. The guys running down the field <laughs> showing the ref the, the the teeth mark on his shoulder, and the ref didn't even do anything. Now, wow. I guess afterwards they find a diner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think it's only the third inning. Game one. Pitch will be taken inside and up high. So Jones trying to work the count here. Column A goes to one and two. The one out walk to Marque because he's still over there at first base. Orioles so far 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Their 271 team average is now second to the Detroit Tigers. Who have moved into first place in that category? It's down about seven points since New York, though. They were at 278 over the weekend. Uh, they had a lot of opportunities against the White Sox. They did win two out of the three games, but in walk off fashion, won an extra inning. As Jim Presley said, he was listening to the radio talk show. I said, oh, one possess you to do that. But he said, you do get nine innings to score runs, or in some cases, extra innings, 12 innings the other day. But I said it just makes it a lot easier if you do it early. True for everybody involved. You know, opposing pitcher gets to go shower. You know, they <laughs> relax. I mean, there are a lot of things. That's a benefit, eh? Yeah. One, two delivery on the way, and another one to the backstop. <laughs> They've all been in the same spot, and that's another uh, wild pitch. His second of the ball game. So that'll move the runner down into scoring position. And Jose said, I'm too old to, to I mean, what he just kind of backhands it and bounce way out in front of home plate and a little slider, get on top of it. Yeah, he's just trying to hopefully one hand it. Ball hit about three out feet in front of him. And that is his first wild pitch of the game. Each pitcher has one. So Jones get a, gets a chance to tie the ball game up and a base hit. Kekas with two down. Off on contact. 2 2 delivery and the other way, and that will be foul. Now, pretty much everything hard. That was 86. That's about the slowest it's going to be. So, that window, and it's not a bad one, 86 to 95. The hanging slider. So he throws one to the backstop. So the pitch count up again. Adam in a pretty good battle here. Seventh pitch coming up. Potential tying run at second base. Nick Marikakis. Jones with that six game hit streak, 10 for his last 28, including two home runs, four RBIs. Two ball, two strike count. Jones will take it and it's full. Yeah, the most pitches that uh, Alex uh, Colomay threw down in uh, AAA was what? Uh, 96. So he's working on that. Adam stands in trying to get Marcakis home. Marcakis is third in the league in hits. Jones is fourth, separated by just one. Three ball, two strike count. Big secondary lead at second. And Jones a chopper to short. Zobrist. Makes the play. No runs, no hits, no errors. Had one left on base, two left on by the O's through three. And the Rays have a two to one lead. And look at those eyes.
series records in their last eight against the American League East. That's why they've improved to 21 and 13 against the East. The best record against the East of all the ball clubs in uh, division play. Seven and one record against the Rays certainly hasn't hurt that. They were six and 13 against Tampa Bay last year. And for T.J. McFarland, what a boon he has been here in June. A 6-1.61 ERA, 14 and two thirds innings. He has been a workhorse out of the pen. Yeah, he's what he's given uh, Buck Showalter is a guy that can get uh, can pitch multiple innings. He did do some starting. Went down to a Triple A Norfolk. Worked on that breaking ball. Sinker uh, change up uh, slider guy to the slider's been better. So uh, gives you some length. Makes the whole bullpen better. They finished three and uh, two three and zero oh for the Rays. One two and zero oh for the Orioles. Three left by the Rays. Two by the O's. Colome with a walk and a strikeout for Tampa Bay. Kevin Gosman three walks and a strikeout. And a pitch taken on the inside corner for a strike. Geyer had the double. Came around to score in the second inning. He picked up an RBI with his two base hit, mm. and Joyce brought him home, and uh, he'll get on to first base. And Kevin Gossman continues to have some problems today. Yeah, trying to find the release point. This ball just runs. Two seamer gets the jersey. O'Gyre with a little bit of speed, and then it opens up holes. Can't put the shift on, even though Joyce the last time took a fastball up and away and went hit it right here. And uh, of course they had the shift on, and so now more conventional. Even. Joyce DHing it in this ball game. 273 hitter against the Orioles this year. Good lead at first base for Geyer. Osmond seeing that will make the throw over to get him back to the bag. Signs from Tom Foley down at first base at third base rather. Geyer being held by Davis walking off a, a decent lead. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Tampa Bay not a lot of running has been done this season. They are 13th. The Orioles last in stolen bases. Yeah, that's and a shocker when you look at that number. Mm. You know, they usually do a lot more running and they're successful. You, you know Jennings uh, leads the pack with 12 of them. And then even Joyce, if you look at not that he runs a lot, but three home runs. You know, he's a typical guy. He plays mostly against right handed pitching, but 17 to 19 home runs the last three years. Got out of an 0 for 9. Runner goes. Throw down again. He's got him by 4,000 miles. Joseph, two for two. Catching Tampa Bay base runners in this ball game. Well, it's almost like their advanced scout said this guy can't throw. You, you know, it's like Perry O'Brien, the shot putter. That's not the case. Straight steal. Boy, out by three feet. A couple of steps, maybe more than that. Just waiting. So a couple of big plays made behind the plate for Caleb Joseph. He got Kiermaier, who had a one-out single in the first inning, ended up. Gosman faced only three. Now the leadoff batter gets on and gets taken off. And that will be a foul ball. Well, what it allows your starting pitcher to do is to hopefully, by doing that, to get back into not only get back into the count, that was a 2 0 pitch that he stole on. He does there with that pitch, but just get back into the game so he can maybe pitch into the sixth or seventh inning. 2 1 delivery and the off speed breaking ball in there. Boy, we talk about how important it is about the, trying to keep leadoff. Batters from reaching. Well, when you erase them, which he's done on two occasions, that's huge. 2 2 delivery on the way. Popped it up. Machado will give it a look. And uh, that'll be in the seats. Manny after it. Count remains two balls and two strikes. Mentioned Joyce had an 0 for 9 uh, coming into the ball game. Picked up that base hit in his first at bat. It's only his third hit in his last 20 at bats. That average has dropped down to uh, the 260 mark. Gosman with a 2 2 delivery to him and uh, will not get the call and it's full. Three balls and two strikes. A lot of deep counts. 
for Kevin Gosman today. Three two will be taken and there's walk number four. So a hit batter and a walk in the inning but a caught stealing has resulted in an out. Celebrate the 60th anniversary season of the Orioles on Sunday. First 20,000 fans 15 and over will get the 1954 Orioles cap presented by Dow. And stick around after the game kids get to have a gigantic memory as they'll get to run the bases after the Sunday ball game. Tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. John Rodriguez who grounded out his first time up number eight hitter goes to the hole they weren't playing him there big stop Davis pitcher covers and they get the out. Now it's first and third if he doesn't make that play simple as that uh, you're already down two to one they're looking for more runs they would have certainly put themselves in a position if the big cat doesn't get out there and get off the base really nice play short hop thinking about the lead runner and then. The more prudent play is to get that second out. Maybe he knows that Jose Molina was two for his last 35 with runners in scoring position or two for 35 period for the year. The only out they were going to get was yep. the one they got. And a big one, two down. So Molina coming up, called out on strikes. His first time up, Tampa Bay one for three with runners in scoring position today. And Molina had one of those chances in the second inning and was called out on strikes. Hitting just 165 on the year. And the pitch to him will be fouled off. Off speed delivery, he was way out in front of. And Molina with a one strike count. Second game, doubleheader coming up tonight. Seven o'clock game time. Separate admission games today. Now I would imagine we'll see Ryan Hannigan. Uh, a little bit of neck problems. Didn't play on Tuesday, but he's been hot for the Rays. He'll probably do the catching in the second game if he's healthy enough. That one is down the line. It's going to be a base hit, and with two down, Joyce is going to score. So Molina loops one to where nobody could get to it. He'll get the RBI, and it's a three-to-one ball game. Yep, he uh, gets a little lucky. Ball up and in, fights it off. Part of the deal is just make contact. You can see the ball running in on his hands, and certainly not a bad pitch. The result's bad, though, at least for the Orioles. And just because there's two outs, easily going to score. Just the third RBI that Molina has had in 116 at bats. Three runs, four hits now for the Rays. Here's top of the order, Jennings. He'll foul that one back. RBIs by Geyer, Joyce, and Molina. Two walks, two of the four surrendered by Gosman in the ballgame have scored. Loney in the second inning and the walk to Joyce here in the fourth. Here's the 0 1 pitch, and a breaking ball is going to be taken inside. So Kevin Gosman on a tough start so far here and he's already up to the 74 pitch mark. Jennings a couple of ground ball outs. Here's the 1 1 delivery to him with a runner at first another breaking ball and that's going to miss inside. Yeah, it doesn't look to me as his best fastball or command and then what happens is you. Yeah. Doesn't matter when you're young, you you pitch to the to the uh, scouting report, and sometimes you don't really match up well to that scouting scouting report. Trying to get Jennings out with breaking balls, and you know he's a he's a real good fastball hitter. Popped it up, second base. Jonathan Scope will make the catch, but uh, another run at it again. Only one hit in the inning and one left on. The Rays now lead it three to one.
The Red Sox had an opposing player, Stuffy McGinnis, hit a home run off a warm-up pitch. He stepped into the batter's box. The pitcher was still taking his warm-ups. He hit a home run. The Red Sox protested to no avail. That resulted, though, in a rule change that warm-ups no longer end when a pitcher steps into the box, only when the umpire says play ball. And in 1986, Robbie Thompson, now a third base coach, set a major league record. He was thrown out four times trying to steal. It was the Giants against Cincinnati, a 12 inning game at Riverfront Stadium. 0 for 4 base stealing attempts by Robbie in that game. Stuffy McInnes. What were they called him? Stuffy. A lot of head calls, or maybe a little full of himself. Or maybe Imagine he uh, hitting a home run off a warm up pitch and it counts. How about that? <laughs> I mean, we do that on you know intentional passes sometimes. Well, I saw Cabrera hit a single yeah. to, to beat the Orioles when he was playing with the Marlins. Miguel Cabrera, now with the Tigers. The so stuff is now the reason the umpire has to point out and go play ball before pitches are officially part of an inning. Here's Chris Davis to lead it off. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Picked up an RBI and a ground ball out. Chris has had a hit in each of his last three ball games. Colomay's pitch will miss the outside corner. Both pitchers trying desperately to get that call, but Tony Randazzo is not going to give it to him. He hasn't, and there's no sign he intends to change. And they are pitches that are probably off the plate. Yeah. He's not giving him that extra no. inch or two. I mean, you can get the edge of the ball on there and earn it yourself. There's a strike, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one looked uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Do one count. Mm -hmm. No oh, hitters count. Boy, when Chris Davis gets hot, you will see balls back up the middle and left center. They have the Chris Davis shift on. Two one will go the other way. Tony only has to umpire one of these doubleheader games. He gets the plate, and then the uh, David Rackley is a member of this crew. Brian Gorman's a crew chief. David Rackley's in the ballpark here somewhere watching the game, or maybe back at a hotel actually since the game doubleheaders. Played at seven tonight, so David Rackley will have home plate. He's not a member of this four man crew for game one. Two ball, two strike count. And Davis will take another one of those pitches away, three and two. Yeah, the one thing about the Orioles, if they're 18 and 18 at home, they 29th in home runs per game at 3.28. That needs to change. And already Tampa Bay at what they do on the road, three, which is low, and that's why they're. 13 and 23. And he walked it. Well, that's the way you want him to pitch when you're down by two runs. Throw a 95. Let's let's throw a breaking ball. Let's throw a low percentage pitch. Well, don't forget voting ends in one week for the All-Star game. Nelson Cruz remaining in the lead for the DH. Matt Weeder's catcher. Adam Jones looking for an outfield spot. You can still vote, and uh, we hope you'll get to it. You can earn ticket discounts. And plus a chance to win the autographed All Star Game jersey. So keep voting Orange. Do it online now. 35 times you can vote that many at Orioles.com/slash vote Orange. Cruz flying out to center field his first time up. Davis on at first base, second walk off Colome, and the strike on the outside corner. Now these two teams that Jim was talking about have exactly the opposite numbers as far as what they do at home and on the road. You've got the Orioles who struggle to score the runs at home and Tampa Bay that struggles to do the same on the road. So it's a, something's got to give for a game set. Here's the 0-1 delivery and that somehow didn't hit him. Not even as uni. Got to go to the more blouse effect. The uh, the David Wells look. Pretty much the pitch that hit Geyer last inning. He just missed the billowing unit. Here comes Jim Hickey. No so Hickey calling Molina out with him as well. Well, I'll tell you, he's putting the fingers down, young pitcher. I mean, 3 2 breaking ball with a two run lead to Chris Davis. And maybe Jim's saying, hey, what do you do best? Well, I'm a fastball pitcher. Well, then maybe you want to throw it. Nothing more frustrating with the lead, and you don't let your defense, and it's a good one, uh, help you by walking people. 
So Hickey has his conversation as much with Molina it looked like as it was with Colomay. When you really count on a veteran catcher to at least have the game plan somewhat. I mean, and the game plan could change depending on who the, who's pitching and how's he, how he's pitching and what the commands are. I think, but with Colomay, they they had a plan. It's going to be establish your fastball, throw your breaking ball off it, not the opposite. One ball, one strike count on Cruz off the fist to short. One hoppers over as Rodriguez. Another double play. That's the second one they have pulled in the ball game and two down, nobody on. Yeah, changeup. Not a great one, but it's up and in, and Nelson swings at it. And but there were five double plays in the last two games in against the White Sox, and already today that we've had two. And it's time for all fans to tweet your photo using hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Two down, nobody on. Three-one lead for the Rays. Hardy up, popped out his first time up. Colomay and his pitch will be there for a strike. Shortstop will take the pitch and a miss down low. For Hardy here at home this year, hitting 265, 318 on the road. JJ, of course, with that one home run hit on the road. One ball, one strike. Set up outside by Molina. Pitches outside and fouled away. And JJ with a one ball, two strike count. Here's the one two delivery to him and Hardy will really reach for that one. So Colomay is going to pick up the strikeout his second he faces only three in the inning. He's not had a one two three inning but in the last three innings he's only faced three batters. Out for the year has done a magnificent job behind the plate, especially throwing out base dealers. He gets Kiermeyer in the first inning, then came up with another one after Geyer had gotten on leading off, being hit by a pitch, two for two, throwing out Rays so far in this game. Yeah, clinic. Great pitches to throw on, accurate throws, because even if you uh, do get rid of it quickly, it still has to be accurate. And those throws right on the money. He's thrown out 12 base stealers, 12 out of 24 
fifty percent now. The leader is uh, Robinson Torino for Texas in the American League with eighteen caught stealings and a number more games than Caleb Joseph has had. Here is Kiermaier, one of those he caught stealing. Kiermaier with a single and he has popped out and a swing and a miss. Yeah, Kiermaier better, got yeah. the nickname Outlaw playing uh, 2011 in center field in the minors. He had 21 outfield assists. 21. And his teammates said, You play that outfield like an outlaw. And so he got the nickname and it has stuck. So outfield Kiermaier still is hung with him. He used to have a country western song to bring him to the plate. But he had a bad year after he got the nickname Outlaw, so he changed to some funk stuff. Pops that one up. Joseph called off. Good play in the China. Yeah. Well, they played together in the minor leagues. That's the first time. You take it, Manny. Speaking of the minors, our PNC minor league report is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Hurley, uh, Julio uh, Borbone putting up some good numbers. Major League experience. So. And recently, red hot. Orioles stockpiling players, pitchers, and position players to add depth to the organization. Here is Zobrist who will take the pitch for a strike on the outside corner. He's drawn a walk and he has flied out. Zobrist, the switch hitter, playing short. Escobar with a shoulder problem. Right handed 286, left handed 234. That one goes to Marquecas on the fly. He'll knock it down without letting it get by him. And Zobrist is on with a single. He's hot. So Zobrist gets hit number five for the Rays. Comes with one down here in the fifth inning. Kevin Gosman will work out of the stretch again. He has not had a one, two, three inning. He did face only three in the first with that caught stealing in, it, in that inning. Longoria's drawn a walk. He is grounded out. He's been watching pitches in his at bat, just waiting for a strike to be thrown in the First couple of times he came up and didn't get one his last time up drew a walk. Yeah, there is nothing uh, more difficult for a pitcher to than to face a team back to back, even if it's been eight or nine days. Especially if you're not quite as sharp as uh, Kevin was down in Tampa. So they know the stuff, they know the movement. If you're on your game, you know, it doesn't really matter. You make your pitches and let your defense pick you up. But today it's just it's it's certainly not a bad game. It's just been a struggle from what we've seen. He's been that good. Longoria, despite a struggle this season, leads the team in homers with 10, second in RBIs with 37, one behind Loney. Here's the 1-0 delivery on the way, and again he'll take. Just won't bite. 2-0. There are the uh, numbers as we get into uh, at almost the halfway point. And you're always one pitch away from a home run because he's got that kind of bat speed. All time raised leader in homers with 172. 2 0 delivery runner at first base, and he'll foul that one off. The Longoria takes it to 2 and 1. Evan Gosman, after his fourth win of the year, making his fifth start. For the Orioles. Right handers are, have touched him up at a 278 clip coming into the ball game. And Longoria will be jammed a bit, pops it up left center. Pierce, Jones, Pierce. And he's got it halfway. Zobras back to first. Two down. Loney coming to the plate, drew a walk, scored in the second inning. RBIs Geyer and Joyce in the second. RBI by Molina in the fourth. Orioles had a ground ball RBI by Davis in the first inning, scoring Marcakis. Those are the runs on the board. Another game where the pitchers, at least halfway through the ball game, have controlled it. Loney with two down takes the pitch down low for a ball.
Youngsters on hand for the day game part of our doubleheader. And the pitch that's going to be down low again, 2 0. Yeah, Loney definitely looking out over the plate. The one thing Kevin, uh, he's been able to pitch to righties more comfortable to his arm side, which would be into righties away to lefties. So that's where Loney, as we mentioned, a lot of line drives, you put that 27% number. Where he'll look away and try to drive the ball somewhere. Loney down the line the other way. And that will be a foul ball. He's had one of the better averages against the Orioles of anyone here at this ballpark. He's a 341. Well, I remember the, you know, last year was his first year with the Rays that I we were talking to Joe Madden in spring training. He said, Why'd you get him? He said he's a high on base percentage, very good fielder, and uh, you know, he's a high average guy. And that's what exactly what he did for the Rays. And I think he went three for three or four for four. He was slumping early on, and that kind of turned his year around. That was in early April last year. He's hit the. He's, he came in 20 for 60 against the Orioles since joining the Rays in the 13. Two ball, one strike counts. Zobris with two down, not going at first. And again, the other way foul. Yeah, good movement with good velocity. You know, ideally, you, you want to pitch him in every once in a while, but at least. The mantra that we had that was Ray Miller, George Bamberger, two pitching, really good pitching coaches. That you pitch in when you're ahead or even. So when you go two and oh, you're never ahead. Now you're even, so I guess you could take a shot in here. Let's see if they do come on the inside part of the plate. Looks like that's where Joseph's going. Two two hit in the air to center field. Jones chases it down. Money is retired as are the Rays. No runs. One hit. No errors. One left. Orioles needing offense down by two. For the achiever in you. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer here for game one of the doubleheader at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. And right now, a 3 1 Rays lead. Second game tonight will be at 7 o'clock. Chris Tillman will be on the mound for the Orioles. Odorizzi will make the start for the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, he's been pitching well for him, so better get some runs on the board. Column A, you see a couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, in and out of trouble. He gets in trouble, throws double plays. He's done it twice back in the second and then in the fourth. Orioles have left a couple on, both in scoring position. Go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Here is Manny. Machado with a base hit, five game hit streak for him. He'll go after the first pitch and foul it away. Machado during the hit streak, seven hits in 17 at bats. 
Colome with the 0 1. And again comes inside. Jack knifed away. One ball, one strike count. That could be a pretty effective pitch. Yep. Well, you don't ever get too comfortable. Good velocity, good movement. Right at the kneecaps. It's a way of pitching in, and it's hard. The guys get out of the way. It seems like if you're going to get hit, it's going to be in the upper extremities. I don't like to get hit in the knees and the ankles. One one delivery on the way, and then yeah. go back outside <laughs> yeah. with a pitch like that, and that's pitching. Yep, it is. You can do it, and you can be wild, and you can be a. I mean, that's a great effective way of being. It's not wild; it's a purpose. Machado one and two. Colome reached and that'll go to short. Little soft liners over us over in front of it for the out. So in and out and then take a little bit off down and away. Great way of pitching. I don't think uh, when you looked at his numbers and you read it, talking about Colome, I mean, other than his last start, which was not good, he gave up. It's the same guy, folks. One in the third innings, eight hits and nine runs. But other than that, he was lights out. And I think that's what we're seeing. Jonathan Scope will come up against him. The Orioles second baseman did into a double play. His first time up. And uh, Scope. Will take the pitch for a strike. Jonathan just 22 years old. He won't uh, have a birthday until. The fall in October. Getting his chance at the major league level five plus years in the minors. He'll foul that one off. Good minor league totals for him, a 270 hitter at the minor league level. Orioles believe he's going to develop when it comes to the power. Big kid, young, still learning, obviously. O2 count. My. That also will garner your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the, the balls at your uh, your knees and your the shins, but they don't like this. Yeah. Let's see where he goes again. Look at Molina. One two delivery, and that's not where he wanted it. Even Jonathan Scope thought it was going to be outside, so he's leaning in, and the pitch ends up in. But too far in for a strike two and two. Colome and the minors, uh, as far as hit batters, about six a year. Two ball, two strike count. And that one down to third base. Longoria commits an error. Wow. Yeah, kind of a, uh, I mean, he'll go, yeah, should have had it. Usually has it. Ground hugger. And then it comes up. That's the ball. I mean, this is Gold Glover. This comes up on the heel. And that's all it has to do. And if you don't come up with it off the glove, the Orioles get a break. That'll be error number six, charge two, Longoria on the season. The 40th error committed by Tampa Bay. So both the Orioles and Tampa Bay now have 40 errors on the season. They were tied for second in fielding percentage coming into today's game. So let's see if the Orioles can take advantage of it. Caleb Joseph up and he'll pull it foul. Joseph flied out to center field his first time up. Oh one count with one down the Orioles down by a score of three one they've only had two hits. Marquegas got one leading off the ball game in the first and Manny Machado got one in the second. Marquega scored in that first inning after being moved up and Davis picking up the RBI and a ground ball. Colomay's delivery and a towering fly ball. Will it carry left field? Geyer back. Geyer comes in a bit and makes the catch right up against the wall with the wind blowing. It not only moved it in a bit, but over to the line and he followed it over and caught it right off the wall. Yeah, if you're Alex Colomay, you're going, oh no, I just gave up a two run home run. But Geyer gets way back and then goes to his right. So he certainly knows way where the wall is because he's been kind of around it for about 15 feet. 
So an almost but not quite for Caleb Joseph. And there are two down. Scope goes back to first base. And that will bring up Nick Marcakis, a single and a walk for Nick. Again, closing in on that 300 mark. Nick, third in multi hit games coming into today's play with 30 of them. Altuve of Houston with 32. The 100 hit mark has been reached by both Altuve and Melky Cabrera. Altuve's got 107, Cabrera 101. The Orioles are going to get there shortly. Nick's picked up his 97th hit. And Adam Jones right behind him with 95. Two down, scope off first base. And Marcakis on the off speed pitch up high, and Molina again will head out. Well, hitters count, two run lead. Loosen them up. Yeah, Joe Madden was talking about that. Uh, you know, guys not hitting well with runners in scoring position. That changed for Jose because he dumped one into right field for their third run. What did Mike Flanagan used to always say? Sometimes you have to try a little bit easier. That might have been what this conference was about. Yeah. Molina is transformer man, isn't he? Look at him coming back with that blue outfit on. <laughs> Talking to the umpire, I mean, he just looks like a transformer. <laughs> Into a big pickup truck. <laughs> Two old count. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> well, he's, he'll probably tell us he feels more yeah. like a stingray. A yeah, that's right. That's true. 2 0 2 down. And Marquecas will take the pitch on the outside corner. Let's see. Quantos Anos is uh, Jose. Quantos oh, he's a youngster. Well, maybe not. He's 39. He turned. Uh, he turned 39 on June 3rd. Well, if he's a transformer guy, he can turn back to 28 <laughs> whenever he wants. <laughs> 2 1 count. The Orioles have Jonathan Scope on at first base, reaching on the air. Oh, there's another youth inexperience. They'll come to a stretch and throw over there. You do it. It's just the way it is. That's you learn the game and then. Well, some people learn the game, but I mean that is one of the things. You know, you're, you got two outs. Get the get the guy on the, on the plate that's already singled and walked off you. Colomay with a look and the two-one delivery on the way. Nick goes the other way again. Guy here, this one's right at him. He's got it. So no runs, no hits, one error, and one left on base. Five complete, and it is a three-to-one race lead. Bird and the O's. Kevin Gosman called up. 26 man for the doubleheader gets the start. Picture this. Curtis Joseph. Caleb throwing out uh, two out of two in the ball game. 
Wow. Yes. Is that Sarasota or here in Baltimore? That's it. Isn't that beautiful? In the Inner Harbor. There we go. A little sail day. And a real great weekend in the forecast. Hope you'll get out and see the Orioles. Game tonight at 7, game tomorrow at 4, game Sunday, 1 30. The Harbor View uh, condo mm -hmm. on the west side of uh, the harbor here in Baltimore. So the Orioles, Kevin Gosman will try and hold them down now. That offense, a uh, chance to come back in this close ball game as we go to the sixth. That'll be ripped towards the corner by Geyer, and that's going to be a fair ball right off the 3 3 3. Why is he having a day? He's got two doubles, been hit by a pitch, has an RBI, a run scored, caught stealing, and moved up in a wild pitch, so he's on. Now, check out this hanging slider. Oh, I can't wait for it to get up there, and he just belts it down the line. So, a couple of doubles one on the ground, one on a couple of hops off the wall. Second leadoff man on for the Rays. Evan Meek between innings started the throw in the Oriole bullpen. Matt Joyce coming up. Matt's out of day two. He has singled in a run, walked and scored. Runner on at second base, pitch away. Tampa Bay, two out of four with runners in scoring position in the ball game. In the first eight games these teams played, Tampa Bay hit only 190 in these situations. In the dirt, Joseph makes the stop. 2 0. Yeah, one of those afternoons and has trouble getting ahead, completing, getting guys out. Pitch to scouting report. Guy are a good fastball hitter. Start him off with a slider, not a good one. Double into the corner. Joyce will try to get him in or over. Full hitter right here. Good count for him to hit it. 2 0 delivery over the top. He Kevin threw 111 pitches in that last start he had, that which was against Tampa Bay. That was a career high in pitches thrown. Closing in on 95 right now. Two ball, one strike count. Joyce will wrap it. Center field. He got all of it. Jones going back and he's looking and off the wall. Late start, Geyer coming. No relay. It's a double, an RBI. So Joyce has got two ribbies in the ball game, and it is a four to one raise lead. Well, that's the match Joyce, the Orioles know. Uh, a fastball hitter, fastball count, and this is what happens. Right down the middle, and he's waiting. Uh, second hit of the afternoon, single to left, crushes a double to just miss being a home run. And that hit will chase the Orioles starter. Gavin Gossman will be coming out of the ball game five plus innings worked trailing four to one.
goes five and a, five and a third. It didn't really get hit hard till this inning. Couple of doubles, uh, hanging slider, and then the Joyce double off the wall in right center field. So he will leave, and uh, Jiffy Lou pitching change change is good, especially when your oil getting change at Jiffy Lou. Give your vehicle relief with regular oil changes at Jiffy Lou and help stretch the life of your engine. Well, the engine here. What did uh, a lot of managers say? The what drives your ball clubs is pitching. So Evan Meek up and down this year started with a ball club pitched pretty well early and then I think the command issues a lot of cutters and a lot of them ended up in the middle of the plate. So a chance again to come back and help the Orioles. Runner on at second base Joyce who had the RBI double. The Orioles bullpen ranked sixth in ERA now at three point five in Meek's delivery. Take it inside for a ball. This is Sean Rodriguez. Meek with the Orioles. This is the 14th game, 0 uh, 2 with a 6.39 ERA. 31 year old pitching for the Tides, a 2 0 record, and a 2.79 ERA. That ball to Marquecas on a hop. It'll score a run. Joyce will cross. Here's the throw to the plate, not in time. So Rodriguez delivers three hits in a row. That run will be charged. To Kevin Gosman, so his final line will have the five earned runs on seven hits and five. Yeah, they grade percentage. you on uh, how you are with runners in scoring position. This is a cut fastball. You can see it just cut a little bit. So right off the end of the bat. And that's why Nick Marcakis is unable to catch it. And Rodriguez, much better high ball hitter, and gets something out over the plate. Bottom part of this order: Geyer, Joyce, Rodriguez, and Molina are the story in this game. Geyer's got a couple of doubles, two runs scored. Joyce has had a single double walk, scored twice, has an RBI. Rodriguez now with RBI base hit. Molina's had an RBI base hit, all coming from the bottom part of the order. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning. Molina coming up, base hit, single, and he has been called out on strikes. Meek did some closing with the Tides, had three saves, 17 games. The right handers hit 263 off him. Left handers 323 in the limited games, 13 of them he's had with the Orioles. And a swing and a miss. Well, the cutter, it's it's about the movement. You know, we've seen him, that one at 89. We've seen him hit 93, 94. But if you look at his game logs, he gave up four runs against Toronto in Toronto, and then against four runs against Kansas City. So all the numbers get skewed. I mean, Eight runs and two appearances in about two innings. So your ERA is going to be inflated almost all year. There's the 94, but not even close to being a strike. Work Molina away. One ball, two strike count. Runner at first, two runs in here in the sixth inning. And Tampa Bay, five runs, eight hits in the ball game with a 5-1 lead and a, a chance to put more across here in the sixth. One and two, and Molina will follow it the other way. One ball, two strike count. Rodriguez getting a walking lead at first. Here's the one two delivery. Molina to third, backhanded. Manny Machado relay Jonathan Scope, and they turn the rubber play. Boy, it's nice if you're a second baseman to, to be able to get the relay and get out of harm's way. And it all starts with the fast feet, the strong arm of Manny Machado. Well, he's got the new salsa, mild and medium, but he also can, must be able to dance because he salsas his way right into a double play. Orioles continue to be on top now. 94 double plays turned in the ball game, leading the Giants by 11. And what uh, is a little bit surprising about that for the Orioles is the fact that, as we've mentioned before, their starting rotation is a fly ball rotation, bullpen, ground ball. And I was thinking, though, the other part of it also is they don't strike a lot of people out. No. So more balls put in play, more opportunities for double plays. Maybe a combination of a little bit of both of that. Here's Desmond Jennings, leadoff batter. He'll take the pitch away. Plus, He's they have guys that can turn the double play. That helps. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, really does because well, do. a lot of times, if, if you know, when you know, 
when uh, you can get those, uh, you know, ground balls at third base or the balls that are hit slowly and still turn them because of the strength of Scope's arm or whatever, because he's played second base most of the time and he can gun it over there. And he loves playing second. I think the favorite part of his game, even more than hitting, is turning a double play. He, he'll talk about it all day long with you about the art of coming across the bag and making throws. One ball, two strike count. Jennings, leadoff batter, fouls it off. Jennings has taken over that leadoff spot for the Rays last 18 ball games. Now that's where he has hit. He's hit 257 since moving into the leadoff spot. With the Tampa Bay team losing and players on the DL, Joe Morgan, Joe Madden has had to move people around. Joe Morgan wishes he was moving people around, probably. <laughs> nah, Joe doesn't want to manage. Joe can do pretty much what he wants. That's right. And a swing and a miss. So Meek will get the strikeout, but a couple of runs in on three hits, and now a 5-1 raise lead. For the second time in nine games, a guy with a double in the first run. Great defense by Chris Davis trying to keep it close. Uh, Gosman uh, will give up the single to Molina as he dumps it into right field, and then a couple more runs in the fifth inning. Actually, make it sixth inning uh, with a couple of doubles. So, your pitching matchups, Colome uh, trying to beat the Orioles for the first time. Gosman trying to have made it four in a row. He will not be the winner, could be the loser, so he leaves. Uh, in a little bit more, I guess, lack of command than we've seen from him. And that is your uh, Geico game highlights. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There he is, Alex uh, Colomay. They call him up, 26 man. And right now he has done a number on the Orioles. Not a lot of balls hit hard this afternoon at uh, up to this point. Steve Pierce will lead it off for the Orioles here in the sixth inning. A walk and he is struck out. Gallimay pitch to him is a strike. A called strike on Pierce. 94 mile an hour fastball. Gallimay just kind of in cruise. <laughs> Nothing spectacular. Everything good. Just a two hits for the Orioles. Two singles. Marquecas and Manny Machado. It's possible to pitch a two hitter through Five plus innings quietly, that's what he's doing. In times where you've wondered, is he going to be in trouble? And can he find the strike zone? And the answer has been yes. Well, he's really kind of pitched in control. I mean, looks like he's on the edge, but he, the stuff plays really well. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way. Started to lean into a pitch that would back him off the plate. Two ball, one strike count. And as we mentioned, Ed, the, the fifth ranked prospect. Jake Odorizzi, who's going to start the second game, was their number one guy. And they're starting two rookies here in this doubleheader. 
Two ball one strike delivery on the way and uh, that one was away and fouled off. So even, two ball yeah, two strike even when you get into pretty good what you think is hitting counts at 95 away. The Pierce who can hit the fastball doesn't quite get to it. Pierce getting a start in left and Cruz DHing in the first game of the double letter. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way down to third, and that'll be foul. <laughs> hmm. Don't bite the reliever. Then. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way, and he got him. In, up, down, out, gets a K. Yeah, a couple of pitches to hit, and then this one. Good slider. Bottom drops out. So more comfortable as this game is uh, speeding along for him. And perfect uh, two strike pitch to a good, good fastball hitter. Three K's in the ball game. We'll bring up Adam Jones. A couple of ground ball outs for Adam in the game. So far, this is one of those days where people start saying, offense was just terrible. Guys looked awful. <laughs> well, it's because the guy on the mound is doing a pretty good job of getting outs. Your offense will look awful when a pitcher looks good. Well, he's probably thrown two or three pitches that have been really hittable. The Orioles have hit two or three balls really hard. And like I said, he's you know he's been able to throw enough strikes. Like mm. even when he comes into the middle of the zone like that at 95, there must be enough deception, enough movement that one of the hotter hitters in the Orioles lineup, at Adam coming in at 3:30 in the month of June, swings right through it. Now that tells me he's got good natural ability. Those are the kind of guys you want because you figure sooner or later you're going to teach them how to pitch. Came over the top with that last one. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way and he'll come inside. That's the other thing that's pretty clear. He's not afraid of throwing in. And in this day and age that will really help a pitcher because there aren't a lot to do it anymore. And I'm not sure he's trying to do it but it's certainly effective. And even when he comes in he comes in off the plate. Mm. Two ball one strike count to Jones Davis waiting on deck. Dalame with the pitch outside this time. Molina on the scoop, three and one. Well, the reason they have uh, action up in their bullpen is because, and if he does get a little bit wild, and you're in this part of the Oriole lineup, a walk, a home run, all of a sudden, Joe Bad was thinking, "Hey, I got a pretty good bullpen. Might be going there." Adam Jones. 3 1 delivery to him, and he'll lace that one to left field. Geyer's right there. Two down. For every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to support Be More for Healthy Babies. The Orioles have drawn 196 walks, $9,800. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Shift is put on. Davis RBI ground ball in the first. The only Orioles run. He drew a walk in the fourth inning. Orioles here at home averaging 3.28, 29th in the majors in runs at home. Tampa Bay, 29th on the road, averaging three. They have already helped their cause in that regard with five runs in here in this ball game. 0 1 count, two down. Colomay's delivery to Davis will be the high strike on the outside corner. 0 and 2. Yeah, he's going Powder River. He, uh, he I'm not going to speed up the bat. And if you watch the films, that's what happened in the Chicago series. He laid on the fastball right on the uh, the slider from Veras Belisario to win it for the Orioles on Monday night. 0 2 delivery will just miss. Three strikeouts in the ball game for the rookie. The Rays have a shot at the record for most strikeouts 
in a month in June. They've got 246 now. The Cubs have the record 286 set back in August of 2002. Most strikeouts in a month. That's when they had the uh, Kerry Wood, Mark Pryor pitching. Kind of an amazing accomplishment if the Rays can do that for a ball club struggling the way they are and with two key starters out permanently and another one who's missed most of it. And the Orioles don't see David Price on the mound in a four game set. How about that? And he's had what five consecutive games, uh, 10 or more strikeouts. Yep. Here's a 2 2 delivery on the way, and that one's going to miss. Yeah, just barely. Change up. Stays a little bit low. So Chris Davis works the count, trying to get an at bat for Cruz. Three balls, two strikes, and two down. Delamay's delivery on the way, and Davis takes and walking. Third walk surrendered, and that will be it for the 25 year old on the mound. Yeah, Joe Madden coming up. Yeah, 104 pitches. I think they got exactly what they wanted. They bring him up. You know, pitch had three starts for him last year. Well, he comes up and uh, works his way almost into the sixth inning. Major League record for Column A is one in one lifetime, so he's got a chance at his second win. Boxberger will come on to pitch. to pitch first game of this doubleheader and there's his final line. Well what he's able to do is uh, stay away from the big inning. So gave up the run on the infield out by Chris Davis. Uh, he was you know, a little bit wild but not excessively wild so he leads with the league. And uh, Brad Broxberger will come on. And uh, they, the Orioles certainly know him. They saw him, uh, I guess, probably for the first time this year back on May when he came in, bases loaded, struck out the side. Pretty impressive. And he did it on nine pitches. So there are the averages, uh, all the runs, or at least the most of the runs he gives up uh, are via the home run, giving up seven runs, five of them via the five home runs he's thrown. But pretty good arm, big curveball. Uh, the, the night back in May, he was thrown in the mid 90s. Came over from San Diego. So Boxberger, 26 years old, will make his seventh appearance against the Orioles this year. Seven out of the nine games they played. And the pitch to Cruz is in there for a strike. Runner at first, two down. Boxberger, six and two thirds innings against the Orioles this year. Two runs, three hits, nine strikeouts, and two walks. Orioles hitting 130 against him. Davis on at first base. Cruz sit into a double play and he is flied out and an 0-2 count. Boxberger after the final out here to end this 
Sixth inning for the Orioles. And huge gap in left center because they play him about three steps to right field. O2 delivery and play him anywhere you want yeah. on that one. So uh, into Twa and Boxberger gets it done. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on, six complete. Double header today. Chris Tillman will take the mound against Jake Odorizzi. Our coverage begins at 6:30 with those extra presented by Geico, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Massive. Uh, take uh, Odorizzi again. Their top prospect. The Orioles certainly have seen him. They beat him, but it was a very low run score running game. Uh, and uh, Chris Tillman trying to win for the first time here at Camden Yards. It fits very well this year. Six and zero. Oh. On the road, to 0 and 4 here, but not a lot of run support. Speaking of not a lot of run support, that's what's going on today. So Evan Meek will stay on after coming in and gave up the one hit for a run, but he'll stay on here to pitch the seventh. Garemeyer up and we'll take the pitch for a strike. Can't believe it. Home plate umpire Tony Rendazzo said you went around and the bench hollering out Joe Madden. Letting the home blade umpire Tony Randazzo get an ear full there. Yeah. And the irony of the outlaw getting robbed. <laughs> Good that. Yeah, Meyer will go to short. Hardy, the scoop. Better hurt. Nice pick yeah. by Davis. Well, he just puts his head down and scampers. It's the way he plays. Yeah. He's an all out player. And then it's just a sprint. JJ knows the speed. He doesn't even hesitate. And there's the low throw. Good play, both ends. One down here in the seventh inning. Here's Ben Zobrist at short, a single, a walk, and he is flied out. Switch hitter will take the pitch for his strike. Rays have gone four for six with runners in scoring position today. The Orioles are 0 for four. Orioles have left four on. The Rays have left five. Only two hits for the O's. Five, eight, and one for the Rays. One, two, and zero oh for the Orioles. Pitch will miss. One ball, one strike count. Actually, going to need another late rally. Yeah, that's that's what it's been about lately, as far as run support. Grand slam in the eighth inning on uh, Wednesday. In there for a strike. The yeah. Orioles late in ball games have scored in the eighth or ninth inning. Eight of the last nine games. And they have scored in the ninth inning in three of the last four. Walking the tightrope. One two delivery to him down to first. Davis big hot knocked it down. Pitcher covers throw there. Oh. Not in time. Boy, it looked like he slid across the bag. Meek is arguing, took kind of a nasty fall, but Showalter is on his way out. The call is safe. Well, it wasn't a conventional uh, catch it and tag the base. So take a look. 
foot on bag. Um, well, nope, maybe not. Maybe not. He might have. Let's see. This will be a great angle right here. Catch in the glove, foot's on the bag, and he slips. Yep. It'll get reversed. So, Buck Showalter will challenge. Yeah, again, he, he, he caught it and then slipped and tagged the bag at the same time, so it's certainly not an easy call for the up. So the ball's in the glove, foot's on the bag. There you go. This call to New York brought to you by. That angle very tough to see. The other one though pretty good. So the call is out. Didn't take too long. Good play by Meek to get over and gets the second out. Well, he sprinted over to the bag. And you like to take an angle where you know sometimes you can't do it depending on the speed. Zobris runs pretty well, so he's getting down there. You like to take an angle where maybe you can come along the line a little bit, but again, the ball in the hole, Davis catches it. You want to get over there as quickly as you can, but obviously he tagged the bag but just fell down doing it. Now Longoria bases are empty two down 43 seconds to get that one done in a hurry. Reversing the call. One oh count two away. Longoria walk he is flight out grounded out. Oh for two in the ball game, and he'll take that one foul. The Longoria struggle against the Orioles continues below the Mendoza line now this year against the O's. Meek trying to retire the side in order. That has not happened for Tampa Bay in this ball game. Here's the 1 1 delivery, and he went. And a strike called in any event, said Tony Randazzo. And it's 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes, two down. Kevin Gossman gave up five runs, seven hits, five plus innings, four walks, and a strikeout. Fouled away into the Oriole dugout. So Longoria and a ball and two strikes. Nikon in relief trying to get Longoria out of there and get the Orioles back up to the plate, trailing here five to one. Evan Meek working out of that stretch. Here's the one-two delivery. Longoria again. He got one to drive. Found the way straight back. It's two in the dugout, and the white flag being waved by the <laughs> Oriole players in the dugout. Back your bird, second half of the year, Major League Savings. Get your Birdland Summer Six Pack. Ticket 26, your choice. Get the most anticipated games and promotions. Birdland Summer Six Pack, Orioles.com slash six pack. One two delivery on the way and he got him throttled back 81 mile an hour pitch two strikeouts for make seventh inning stretch time the Rays have the lead.
They jumped out of the ball game and uh, continue to be on top back here at the ballpark. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, and for the Orioles, they knew you just don't want to relax, Jim, on these kind of ball games against these kind of teams. It's, it's too good. It's not that they've relaxed, but this is the Tampa Bay club that can win. Well, of course they can, and I think again, you know, through the first eight, the Orioles win seven of those eight. But that's in the rearview mirror. So trending themes. If the Orioles hit home runs, they're a good offensive ball club. Uh, they're eighth in runs here. They, you know, they're 29th out of uh, 30 teams at home, so they haven't scored runs. Uh, Gosman didn't pitch as well as he's capable of. Colome pitched better than, and you know, we haven't seen him a lot. He pitched very well. He outpitched him, and now it's about the bullpens. Can you score off their bullpen, which is a pretty good bullpen? Yep. That's what the Orioles going to have to do. Here in the bottom half of the seventh inning, Hardy has popped out and struck out. And a slow roller that's going to go foul outside of third base. They certainly have an offense that's capable of doing that because their ability to hit the long ball. But can they get enough pitches? Can they get enough base runners on? And then can the Oriole bullpen hold down the Rays? Boxberger came out to get the final out on the strikeout on three pitches. Against Cruz. Yeah, that's what he does against the Orioles. That's right. Here's the 0 2 delivery. Now, uh, how about this? You mentioned that against the Orioles, he came on and we researched it at the time. One of the few ever to come out in the game and throw nine pitches, three strikeouts. Well, he's thrown six pitches and has two strikeouts now in this appearance. And, uh, you know, he'll, he's got a good change up. He's got a breaking ball. I mean, that was just knee high, 93 to 95 miles per hour. And it's had some success in the National League. I mean, it just seems like he has a deceptive windup, kind of jumps at you, and there's the changeup. So one to slow your bat down, and one to speed it up. Try to hit 95. And this looks to me, at least against the Orioles, he's had the ability to pitch at the knees. Boxberger with the 0-1 count. Nothing but strikes. That ball's deep. That ball's going to leave. Way back in. Goodbye, home run. Manny Machado delivers the long ball to break up that streak of K's. And the Orioles get that much closer. Machado will get his fifth home run of the year, RBI number 13. Well, what a second or third game going back to 2012. Hit a couple home runs. I think Boot Powell did that back in 1962, and they were on hanging breaking balls. We've seen the change up, seen the fastball, and then he hangs him a breaking ball, and it's see you later in a hurry. Press blind drive. I mean, no doubt it's going to carry out of here. Off Boxberger, the solo shot. Jonathan Scope will foul it back. Shilpa Patel of Owing Milling of Owings Mills, our Maryland Lottery contestant, another 500. And yeah, just able to stay right behind it. Perfect pitch to hit, didn't miss it. Jonathan Scope has reached on an error, hit into a double play, so the Orioles get within three. And we'll try and mount yet another late in the game surge. 0 2 pitch, foul back. Oxberger surrendering the homer he has given up, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of them. That's his sixth home run. Surrendered in just 27 innings pitch. So what now? Uh, given up 10 runs and eight of them have scored via the home run. Bell four in the bullpen. 0-2 count on scope. Joseph waiting on deck. And that pitch is going to be outside. Yeah, you got the pitches he's trying you got, to learn yeah, to you, take. Yeah, you got McGee. Well, he's pitched well against both of them. Brad Brack uh, getting up and getting loose for the Orioles. And that one's going to bounce. Scope has faced Boxberger only once, 0 for 1. And a two ball, two strike count. Now the Orioles now 36 major league leading home runs in the month of June. Two and two. Boxberger's delivery, and Jonathan will jump on it and follow it back. Yeah, he's got a scuffle now with two strikes. I think as a young hitter, and 
And this is what all the experience factor is. He's just going to have to kind of learn that he's going to have to find out what his hot zone is. And, and that's what he's going to try to hit until he gets the two strikes. Two two will just miss inside. So he'd worked him away, then came back looking for the inside corner, didn't get it. And the count goes to three and two. Battle of the bullpens now, even though the starters are still the pitchers of record. Three ball, two strike delivery on the way. Scope rips it foul. And one of the things, and you try to, as a former pitcher, you kind of watch guys having at bats. It seems that he's a little bit more controlled with runners in scoring position and also with two strikes. Doesn't mean he doesn't strike out because he doesn't swing as hard. That one the other way again foul. So he, until then, Jonathan, because as you mentioned, only 22, does have a tendency to maybe overswing a little bit. Three ball, two strike delivery on the way, and Scope will go down swinging. Good pitch. Yeah, the disappearing. He's a little bit of um, Steve Johnson, Oriole pitcher, uh, came up a couple of years ago, has had injuries, but throws it 91 in the middle of the plate, and it looks like it's about 100. So there must be a lot of deception there. A nice pitch outside part of the plate. Two outs in the inning by a strikeouts. Three outs he's recorded since coming on. Strikeouts. Joseph shift on in the infield. Breaking ball way outside. Caleb has flied out once to left, once to center. Couple of home runs, seven RBIs. 1 0 delivery off the fists and back. Orioles still with just three hits in the ball game. The RBI, the other one on that ground ball out back in the first inning by Davis. And the Orioles not getting on the board again until here in the seventh on the homer. Look at it. Molina will make his 9,220th walk to the mound. <laughs> uh, yeah, he almost gets him in the, the helmet or maybe the head. Up it in. Well, the next game is not till 7:05. What if no hurry? Nowhere to go. Just make sure you probably went out, had a multiple visits today. Or so. I mean, many. Two on delivery and a soft toss and out in front of it not expecting that pitch and the count goes to two and two on Caleb. Yeah. That, yeah. Not a two one change up. Boy, you watch him pull down the window shade. That's the way the change up can be thrown. Like you're going over and just pulling down the blind. If, well, people don't have any blinds anymore, but if <laughs> you did. If you did, that's the way you do it. And then and come back with a heater at 93. So that'll do it again. He strikes out. So he struck the side out, but Manny Machado gets his first career home run against Tampa Bay, and the Orioles pick up their second run. We've completed seven. Rays lead it 5 2.
We're in the game, our AT&T's fan photo. Loving a day at the yard. And we hope you will while the Orioles are on this long homestand. Another game tonight at uh, 7, tomorrow at 4, Sunday at 1.30, and then Texas will be coming in. Uh, Brad uh, Brock comes on and uh, two and two thirds innings against the White Sox, so it gives the uh, Orioles some uh, some uh, length and uh, pitches very well. A lot of fastballs, breaking balls, a slider, occasional changeup. Threw some good ones the other night. But the one thing uh, you look at the numbers, it's pretty much about the base on balls. Good stuff. 93 to 95, hard slider. Every once in a while, the uh, command will go astray. So he needs to do what Buck Shoulder would certainly like to have. Buck Shoulder would love to have him just come in, pitch, keep it the game where it is, and see if the Orioles can catch up in their final six outs. Loney will be leading it off in the eighth inning. Loney's had a walk and a run scored 0 for 2. Officially at the plate. 5 8 and 1 for the Rays, 2 3 and 0 for the Orioles. Geyer and then Joyce, this bottom part of the order that has raised havoc. That'll go to center off the end of the bat. Jones, who was a little bit shallow, had plenty of time to get there, and Loney's retired. Pitching and out here in the eighth. Opponents hitting 269 against Brock overall. Meek worked a couple of innings, one hit, and uh, two strikeouts. Well, Geyer's had two doubles. When Brad Brock is in the Oriole bullpen, he's been up and down, what, three times? He, he gives, now you have two pitchers with McFarland that can pitch multiple innings. So, again, uh, over the course of a season, that certainly bodes well for your bullpen. 0 1 count. And a wild cut on a pitch up and away. Brock was 2 and 1. 12 games with Triple A Norfolk before he was recalled May 2. And a 4.85 ERA there. Brock worked against the White Sox on the 25th, a couple of days ago, two thirds of an inning. Didn't give anything up. Headed to the seats. Davis, no play. Yeah, you were talking about Brandon Geyer. Uh, he fractured his thumb back in May. I saw him in the hallway. I said, uh, How's the thumb? He said, Pretty good. I said, Which one was it? He. <laughs> He, his gloves on. he goes, oh, it's my left one. He said, hey, feeling pretty good. Feeling real good. Apparently, uh, he fractured it and just diving for a ball. Caught the, I guess, the thumb and the webbing of his glove and rolled over on it. He said, it's a play he's made hundreds of times. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way, and that'll be outside to him. So Geyer gets back in the lineup and brings that bat with him with a 308 lifetime average here in this ballpark. He's had two home runs here at Camden Yards in his career and a two for two day along with being hit by a pitch. Here's the one two delivery. Geyer will look. Rays have had uh, RBI by Geyer. Joyce has got two. Rodriguez has one and Molina has one. Yeah, his first major league home run uh, was right here back in 2011. He had a two-run home run off Zach Britton. Two-two delivery, and that's going to go down the line. He stays hot. Chased down by Pierce on his way to second base. A three doubles game for Gaia. This one comes with one away in the eighth inning. Yeah, he's not missing him. Uh, good fastball hitter. And of course, when you go back to 2011, I saw him and he was walking in, and I say, hey, "Congratulations!" And they sent him out that day. I don't think they're going to do that any now. Three doubles. Grounder, couple of line drives, one on a breaking ball, and then that one on a fastball off of Brock. The uh, Geyer's on at second base and another runner in scoring position. Four for six for Tampa Bay in these situations on the day. Joyce is also at a two hit ball game. Single, double, both times picking up an RBI. Walked and scored. Kind of, makes it after it. kind of makes it easier for Joe Madden to decide who's going to play in the, in the nightcap. Mm. Geyer has his first three doubles ball game. And then you get to, with Dave Zeus is on the disabled list, hurt his hands on a swing. Jerry Sands, who hit the pinch hit home run off of Mattis, he hurt his wrist on the swing. So they're all on the disabled list. One ball, one strike count. Yeah. 
game one so far dominated by the Rays and a potential big run at second base here in the eighth inning. Here's the one one delivery on the way and that misses a two ball one strike count on Joyce Rodriguez waiting on deck. Hardy trying to hold the runner fairly close at second base. Don't want that big jump with only one away. And again, same place, same result. Count goes to three and one. So Joyce saying if that pitch isn't going to be called a strike, I'm not swinging. Three ball, one strike count. That one he goes after and doesn't get a three and two. Well, the unexpected for him when you can pitch that way, it's a little bit backwards. Fastball count, good change up first one that Brad's run, and it's a good one. And then you could not, you could not walk up the home plate and hand it to Caleb Joseph in a better spot. Tailing down and away. Three two delivery. Keeps the ad bat alive against Brock on the foul ball. Three two one down. And don't think if you're an advanced scout, you don't put that down on your little notebook. He will throw the change up in fastball counts. And back to back ones here in the eighth. Three two delivery again, and he got it. Move that one in just enough from where he had been a couple times before to get the strikeout. And then Matt Joyce just taps his front thigh with his, uh, takes the hand right off the bat and goes, Oh, I just got pitched to. Perfect location. You can see the ball run right to the outside corner and he swings right over it. Look at that location. Mm. Two down, still a runner on his second base. Now Rodriguez, base hit RBI. One for three in the ball game. 205 hitter on the year with 24 runs batted in. John Rodriguez starting at second and he'll take the pitch down low for a ball. We well, do not discount the importance of that potential run out there at second. For the Orioles having made these comebacks of late in the eighth and ninth innings. And that's a good pitch in there for a strike. Yeah, dead red fastball hitter ever since uh, he was traded over the Rays and Better high ball hitter. Memorial pitching coach Dave Wallace looking on. He knows all that stuff. 1 1 delivery to him and got him to go after one that moved away. A couple of real good pitches with movement for Brock here against Rodriguez. One ball, two strikes, two down. Not worried about Geyer. The Orioles letting him get a big secondary lead here with two away. Delivery on the way and got him. Brock gets a strikeout. Back to back strikeouts to end the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Orioles coming up, bottom of the eighth, top of the order.
transmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. So the Orioles looking to mount one of those famous comebacks that they've had of late in the eighth and ninth innings. Keep it to a 5 2 ball game. And uh, Boxberg is out of there. And they'll do it against a guy, Brand, uh, Grant Balfour, that uh, looked like he was going to wear an Oriole uniform, but uh, the physical didn't come in the way that the Orioles wanted, so did not get the multi year contract. Ended up signing with them, so he was the closer, and he. He has pitched well as of late. I mean, he's much better. Uh, again, uh, an earned run over his five and two thirds innings. Struggled early. He's had a couple of uh, outings where he's given up five runs. First time ever he's ever done that in a season in his career. So that, that will certainly inflate the earned run average. Fastball, curveball, an occasional changeup pitcher. 93, 94 miles per hour. And when he's on his game, a lot of strikes. Belfour appearing in uh, game number three against the Orioles this year, ending in a third, has given up a run on three hits, no walks, and a strikeout against the Orioles this year. So the Orioles get the top of the order up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nick Marquez, a base hit, a walk, and he is flied out. Yeah, Belfour has been seen by um, most of these Orioles, with Marquez one for ten against him. Yeah, the one thing he has done: uh, 21 walks. That's sixth most. Royals need some free passes. First ball hitting down the line, and it will be fouled. No, he throws a lot of strikes. I mean, very aggressive. You know, talks to himself. I mean, he's he's into it. Nick with a 286 number against the Rays this year has kept it up with the base hit, the one for two in this ball game. The Orioles only have three hits. His single, Machado single in the second, and Manny Machado's home run in the seventh. The 0-1 delivery, and again that way in foul. Orioles with a 7-1 edge in the season series against Tampa Bay. Second game coming up tonight at seven here at Camden Yards in the day-night doubleheader. Joe Madden's team 32 and 48. The Orioles 41 and 36. Bell for the 0-2 pitch and just missed. Nick turned around to look at the home plate umpire to make sure on that one. And Molina held it a moment, thinking he had it. Bell for has got a two and one mark and six saves and eight opportunities lifetime against the Orioles. 36th game. That will be bounced. Nick wanting no part of that one. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, when you look at those eight games, only one, what, two games where the difference in the score was more than two runs. So, yeah, you want them. But, you know, when the, you play the Rays, they're always going to be tightly contested. But just, you don't win 90 plus five out of the last six years if you can't grind it out, regardless of what your record is. Marquegas hit hard to second. Rodriguez on the short hop. And one away here in the eighth. Follow every Orioles game all season long with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Brings you baseball wherever you are. MLB TV game of the day, live pitch by pitch tracking, classic games, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the App Store, or go to Orioles.com. Steve Pierce has struck out twice and has drawn a walk in the game. Pierce up with one away and nobody on here in the eighth. Shift on in the infield, not all the way around, but they do play him to pull. Yeah, you just kind of take uh, what the advanced scouts and the spray charts, and then you can size the infield by moving, you know, guys around where just. Don't give them as much room. Now, every once in a while, you'll see somebody shoot the ball down the right field line. Down to third, fair ball. Longoria gets the good hop. Two down. And then you just get a pitcher that pitches and throws a lot of strikes. So, a couple of quick outs from Belfour here in the eighth inning, and that will bring up Adam Jones. 
They'll for 10 out of 12 and save opportunities this year. Rays have moved that closer role around on the staff right now. They've had let's see one, two, three, four, five pitchers who've had at least a chance at a save. Two down, nobody on. Jones with the 0 for 3 in the ball game. Belfort's pitch to him will be in there for a strike. Jones one for 11 off Belfort. Man, his stuff not overwhelming. He just very aggressive with his pitch selections. I mean, it's you know, he's not afraid to throw the ball over. There's a changeup. Doesn't throw that very often, but he comes after you. I would imagine after pitching there part of 2007, all of eight, nine, and ten, that he would feel very comfortable coming back there. Big cut, yeah. Reared back for the 90 on that one and uh, one and two. Yeah, that's that's an average major league fastball, and Adam swung at it like it was about 98. I mean, you know, very athletic guy, very very fit, very high energy. Adam coming in with that 3.30 average in June and the eight. June home runs leading the majors and homers this month. One two pitch. Breaking ball is going to be outside Molina. Going out to get it two ball two strike count on Jones. Jim Presley the Oriole hitting coach. Hoping for some numbers here with only three hits up on the board in the game. 2 2 delivery Jones on a chopper right off the plate getting over to cover. Quick pitch, good play. Belfour with a good break. Loney got it to him, and it's a 1 2 3 8 inning. So we go to the ninth. First game of our day night doubleheader with a raise on top. Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer here at Camden Yards on this beautiful Friday afternoon with 15,614. The announced for game one, 15, 614 for the day game. And we go to the ninth. Brock will stay on. Pitches of record are the starters. Column A, the rookie, five and two thirds innings, a run on two hits. He gave up three walks, three strikeouts. Kevin Gosman for the Orioles, five runs, seven hits over five plus. Meek worked two, gave up one hit, two strikeouts. Now Brock on, he's given up just one hit. Molina up against him, will take the pitch away for a ball. Yeah, Jose's had a nice afternoon, a lot of hand holding, a lot of trips to the mound with a youngster, 25 year old right hander. Column A, and then he dumped a single in, uh, driving a run on the breaking ball. Molina's been David Price's personal battery mate. 
He has caught all 17 games pitched by David Price this season, and now with the doubleheader today, gets to work with the 26 man, the call up, call A. Will it be a package deal if Price is traded? Can't afford Molina if you buy Price. <laughs> No matter what well, the price I mean, is, he's making 14 million. It's, it's he's got another year on his contract, and then it's going to get very expensive. Whoever they do trade, better better get the wallet out. One two delivery, and that's a strike in the outside corner. <laughs> Molina will <laughs> quietly walk back. <laughs> Shake it out. Yeah. Now, of course, if he was catching, he'd want this pitch. Mm -hmm. Three strikeouts in a row for Brock. He got Joyce and Rodriguez in that eighth inning. His stuff is good. For Brad, last year, 33 games down to the AAA affiliate for the Padres, and that was Tucson. That was a changeup, so using all his pitches this afternoon and 33 appearances in the big leagues. Leadoff batter Jennings has an 0 for 4. 0 on count, one down. And he'll swing wildly at a pitch up and away 0 2. Yeah, big uh, moving fastball at 93. Right hander sitting only 220 against Brock with that from the third base side delivery. 0 2 delivery. And a swing and a miss on a pitch away. Four strikeouts in a row. Well, when you get on one of these rolls, just remember what it felt like. And they rekindle that when they give you the ball right on the corner and good movement. Take a look. Uh, well outside, but in this two strike count really makes a big difference. Garemeyer coming up. He's had a single, one for four in the ball game. Lefties hit 357 off Brock. Because when he delivers from the third base side, it's a good pitch to see for left handed hitters. Well, that's why you got to use all your pitches. And if you can do that, it won't be that predictable. But you're right. Uh, you know, they see the ball, they pick it up a little bit more. And there's the, there it is. Change up. Young fastball hitter. And he swings right through it. That has been the uh, pitch du jour for Mr. Uh, Kiermeyer, and that's try to get him out with change ups, off speed pitches. Go to center with that one. Jones coming, 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 and he's got it. Good job by Brock. He retires the side in order. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Orioles down, Davis, Cruz, and Hardy. The Orioles need some runs. It's been pretty boring all game long. The Orioles haven't scored much. Manny Machado hit his fifth home run. Gosman struggled a little bit. But you know what? It's the bottom of the ninth. And the, week, and the Orioles have been coming back from behind all week long. There's no doubt in my mind they're going to score at least three runs. <laughs> We're going to hear from uh, Buck Showalter and also Kevin Gosman. Those extra post game begins. Let's come back upstairs now for the do or die bottom of the ninth from Gary and Jim. Tom and Rick hanging with the rally caps. There they are. They've got them on as the Orioles will go against one of the many who've had a chance to pick up saves for Tampa Bay this season. Yeah, big Jake McGee. Now, the Orioles are hoping there's some doubt in this mind. And if you look at the numbers, I'm not sure that's the case. Strike out uh, more than one per innings, the lefties, righties. Actually, uh, righties have a tougher time. 
yet to give up a home run. 161. That was about 96, 97. Hard breaking ball. Orioles know all about him. And then he's on one of those uh, rolls. And only two inherited runners. That, that, that's the case. That's how good he's been all season long. So he makes it. You know, put the ball in play, and he usually does it on his term. Really gets throws over his front side about as well as any pitcher in baseball. And you can see the career numbers against the Orioles a little bit different. And the Orioles are hoping for that in the ninth inning. One blown save against uh, the Orioles this year on June 16. Last appeared on the 25th against Pittsburgh. There he worked two thirds of an inning, no runs, no hits. Comes on here to get lefty against lefty to start with Davis. Coming to the plate and Cruz and Hardy here in the ninth inning. McGee this year with that 1 and 0 mark, 0 for 1 in saves. He's given up in an inning and two thirds, the one hit and unearned run, two strikeouts and a walk. So McGee on. Belfour worked an inning, had zeros across. Bottom of the ninth, two for six with a home run lifetime off McGee. Chris in this ball game an RBI in the first inning and a ground ball out. A couple of walks since. McGee starts him out with a strike in the ninth. Full shift on against Chris. No one pitch checked on it and did hold back. On the season for Davis, 241 off the lefties, actually a little better than his 212 off right handers. One one delivery and the big count on a pitch up. Yeah, very difficult with an upper cup swing to chase that ball until you get the two strikes when you have to swing up out of the zone. And and again, McGee with a power arm can easily throw 95, 96 and ride the ball in the zone. One, two delivery on the way, and that's right there. They came in on that one and gets the K. Yeah, pretty much down the middle, and well, we're still at the point. Probably six home runs this. This month, but just don't think you've seen the ball well. And when you don't see it well, it's certainly hard to pull the trigger. One down in the ninth. Cruz coming up. Cruz an 0 for 3 as the designated hitter in the ball game. A 2 for 3 lifetime off McGee. This game has been a Tampa Bay ball game. Those two runs in the second inning started it and just kind of moved on. The Orioles got the first run in the first inning and they ground ball up by Davis, but haven't had many chances since. Don't you think it's a typical Tampa game? And I don't mean this year's version of, of the Rays that, that come in, what, 16 games under 500, where they pitch well. They you know, don't have flashy innings, they just get the hits. They look at the board, they get, you know, two, and then one, and they throw another two spot up there, and then you get late in the ball game, and then they get to the back end of the bullpen. Seems like they reinvent that every year. Or they have some mainstays like McGee, Balfour back. You know, Peralta's been around. One ball, one strike delivery by McGee is up high. And at the end of the day, they just have more runs when the game ends than you do. And that's how they win. Their bullpen is eighth in the American League in ERA coming into today's ball game, but getting better. And they do believe if you've had a great year out of your bullpen, you better change it for the next year. And a swing and maybe foul tip, but it's a strike, two balls, two strikes on Cruz. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, McGee. He throws downhill so well that the angle is very deceptive. Born in San Jose, but uh, kind of grew up in Reno, Nevada. And not quite. That's an easy 97. It's not like he's putting a lot. I'm sure he feels like he's putting a lot of effort in, but it doesn't look that way. So if you're hitting, ball jumps on you. Rated as the most velocity for a left handed reliever in the American League by the pitch FX people. 
Three ball, two strike out. And Cruz will put that one in the air to right field in the sun. Jeremiah finds it and will put it away, and there are two down. So the Orioles down to their final out. J.J. Hardy coming up, two strikeouts. He has popped out. But stays this way. Adam Jones going to have his six game hit streak ended. Cruz had a modest three game hit streak coming in. That will be over. Manny Machado upped his to five with a two for three day, including his fifth home run. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Kevin Gosman, the Orioles starter, five runs, seven hits, five plus. Will take the loss and be three and two if it stays this way. Another strike. Well, how about right handed hitters hitting two years ago, 0 98, 112 at bats? It's just an amazing number for a left handed pitcher. And you can see and that's it, ball game is over. So the first game of our day night doubleheader will go to Tampa Bay as for just the second time. In nine meetings, Tampa Bay comes away with a win and a pretty impressive one as they defeat the Orioles by a score of five to two. Stay tuned to Massachusetts for game two of our split doubleheader. Chris Tillman on the mound against Jake Odorizzi. Our coverage will begin at 6.30 with those extra presented by Geico, followed by game coverage at 7. This has been a Masson presentation. Tom and Rick O's Extra presented by PNC is coming up right now, and then we'll be back for game two tonight. For Jim Palmer and all of our crew here at Camden Yards, I'm Gary Thorne. Day game over. Rays won it 5-2. Adieu.